Nigeria. Keep watching Yali TV. I'm Adikali Eskamara from Sierra Leone. Keep watching Yali TV. I believe in love. My name is Absa Samba, a correspondent from the Gambia. Keep watching Yali TV. Africa. I'm Milam Lexisia, correspondent from Cameroon. Keep watching Yali TV. I believe in you. It's your boy, Echo Boche, corresponding from Ghana. Keep watching Yali TV. I believe in Africa. I believe in Africa. I believe in Africa. I believe in Africa. I'm Eunice Mano Baggy, the correspondent from Nigeria. Keep watching Yali TV. I believe. I'm Adikali Eskamara from Sierra Leone. Keep watching. Morning, Africa. It is 11:39 uh, GMT from Accra, Ghana, and we are streaming live from Blue Crest University College, Kola Street. Kukumengle, Accra, West Africa. It's such an exciting moment for us as we run up the first phase of our yearly 10 anniversary programs. Um, this program has uh, come as a result of the celebration of the 10 years or one decade of the establishment of YALI, the Young African Leaders Initiative, which was established uh, in 2010 by the US government as a signature program to groom the next generation of leaders on the continent of Africa. As a result of that, a number of um, training programs, namely the Mandela Washington Fellowship, the Yale Regional Leadership Program, were instituted with the Yale Network also, instituted to give an opportunity for other young people to have access to leadership. A whooping number of 650 young Africans across 49 African countries are benefited from this network with um, about 21,000 granted opportunity to train in the United States, Ghana, um, Kenya, South Africa, and Senegal. I'm excited to be your host for the program today. My name is Steven Selassie SEO, and we are on the day two of the Young Africa Media Summit virtual edition. I have uh, my first uh, set of guests present already. Uh, we, we've been here having some brief discussions behind the scene, but let me use the opportunity to give you a highlight of what the Young Africa uh, Media Summit is about. The Young Africa Media Summit is a two-day virtual professional mentoring and empowerment program that has been instituted to groom YALI alumni, YALI TV correspondents, young Africans working in the media, PR, and communication space. The conference is has so far had a number of discussions. It was initially meant to have plenary sections, working sections, as well as um, um, idea thons. But due to the COVID-19 pandemic, we had to change the phase of the program to have in-studio discussions to cover the various aspects of this program. This event uh, also will be, or is being used to celebrate the uh, World Television Day, which was on 21st of November. And above all, it's an opportunity for us to hear from other young people what they have achieved in their space with their practice to inspire you. And later on in the program today, we'll be launching the Young Africa Media Fellowship, which will be used as a vehicle, as a conduit to empower, to mentor, and to have exchange programs regarding media communication and PR in the year 2021. I'll go straight away to engage our speakers right here. I'm super excited to have three 
um, young Africans from Ghana. We'll be having another coming in uh, in the course of the program before we have the second set of speakers. Um, I have in the studio issue Chawe. It's good to have you. All right. Uh, we also have um, all the way from the Volta region of Ghana. We have Mr. Victor Apollo Jube. It's good to have you. He's, he's a Yale fellow and uh, one of uh, Yale TV's uh, correspondents in Ghana. We also have a beautiful lady who is masked up for precautionary six. Um, she's the person of Efwa Grace um, Asumani. Am I right? Somewa. But Somewa. Yes. <laughs> it's good to have you. I'm glad to be here. So um, congratulations to you, uh, Yale Fellows, for our 10 years anniversary. I would love to, I would love you to introduce yourselves, Mr. Ladies first. So we we'll pick it up from you, Grace, and then okay. um, from that we'll speak to Apollo, and then we'll come to issue. So tell us about what you do in the media space and a little bit about yourself. So I'm Grace, as you said. I, I'm a digital PR strategist and a content writer. Um, currently, I freelance for companies that want SEO content for their websites. So um, I've also worked with the media space for a number of years and in the digital aspect, in uh, news for news. Um, yes, so that's what I do basically. And that's where I draw my experience from that I'm going to share with other young Africans across the world. Interesting. Uh, so, Apollo, um, could you tell us about what you do in the media space and uh, a little bit about your leadership experience as well? Yes, thank you. Um, I am a broadcast journalist. I, I've been in the media space uh, when it comes to radio for about seven years. Currently, I'm the morning show host at Kingdom FM in Hope. Kingdom FM has a number of radio stations and who oh, is one of the youngest places. Tomorrow we are even launching our one year. Yeah, wow. So that's what I do. And when you put that aside, I also do a lot on digital media. I am interested in digital media a lot because I want to see data being shared, data being made accessible and available to anyone who wants it we i am interested in making sure that the digital revolution coming in should be able to involve a lot of people and especially Ghanaians. so that's what i think well that's that's very interesting uh, i come to the man with um, a very nice hairdo uh, if you could tell us a little bit about yourself what you do and your your practice experience in the media space okay so um for the past um seven years i've been i've been on social media looking at the ins and the outs of it i've um, worked with separate companies right. i've done separate jobs um I'm, I'm mostly into branding when it comes to social media strategy to get something out there to push this, to push that. Um, most uh, most parts of social media advertising. Mention some of the companies. We want to, we want to know who you are. Okay. You guys have been very modest. I wanted, I wanted uh -huh. to mention names and mention okay. years. And, I mean, I it's think, an opportunity to sell yourself I think as well. So. Some of the not notable companies which I still work with is Despite Media. Mm -hmm. uh, I handle the social media aspect. Okay. I'm part of the theme. The team that handles the social media aspect, we have this, I think, two or so. And then there's UTV, OKFM, and the rest, and for some of the personalities in there. And then I handle for, um, I handle PR on social media for Ohima Messi, um, some notable pastors who, because of the nature of their work, I wouldn't want to mention the names. That's fine. And some other very major gospel musicians we have and even the secular musicians we have um, I think I've done quite small work that's, that's big 
<laughs> and then let me add that I also uh, handle Ghana articles of com um, for online news and broadcasting. Like, I that, try my that, best. That, that's impressive. Um, you know, as young people, one of the very important um, uh, qualities that I I really revere among us is our humility, especially from the, from Ghana. But it's also essential without our achievements because we are the only people who can tell our story the best. The best and when we have platforms like this, I'm super excited to always ensure that um, the young people that we get to interact with always highlight what they do. One way or the other, you might just be inspiring someone somewhere who is watching to come out with what they think they are doing that is in obscurity to be what will bring them out into the limelight. So, I mean, um, even though I appreciate your modesty, I want you guys to be very, um, come out, highlight what you do so that to inspire someone somewhere, especially you. <laughs> All right, so our, our discussion for today is based on digital media in Africa today, the way forward. And uh, to go into that discussion, I would like us to have our first uh, uh, statement coming from one of our partners in India. He's in the person of Dr. Shahid Siddiqui. He will make um, an initial statement once my, my producer is done playing that. We'll come back in studio and we will have a discussion. So if you're ready, let's take Dr. Sadiq's uh, um, statement. I'm very happy to be here in Young Africa Media Summit 2020. And it's really very good opportunity for the youths from not only from African region, from across the world who can learn, who can understand the new way of the media, how it is evolving in, the, in this current scenario when the whole world has been shifted towards a new innovation, new technology, and new way of uh, uh, life. In the 21st century sees content creation being held and led by many more content generators. The internet has introduced a fantastic opportunities for our creatives. Today, when Africa's image in the media is often distorted, one-dimensional view that sees the continent only through a prism of war, disease, poverty, starvation, and corruption. This single story has had massive effect on many African youths. Nobody is pretending that Africa's many serious problems should be played down and or ignored. But the rest of the world and the African themselves need to hear the good news stories as well. Africans in particular need to take ownership of the positive narrative to become ambassadors of positive things. At Young Africa Media Summit, we want to change the African single story. And I'm very sure about this opportunity that this platform, that Young African Media Summit, will be a game changer for the African media space. If you remember from the era of apartheid, what carried the voices of the most Afri South African was alternative media, not necessarily the mainstream media. I think the narrative even today will be the change by those who are not in the mainstream media. in Africa um, that was the initial statement by Dr. Siddiqui if we have the opportunity uh, we will connect to him uh, all the way from India Dr. Siddiqui is the president of the Association of Social Media Professionals Globally and he has been so uh, he and his organization have been very enthusiastic about promoting um, the use of social media in promoting content across the continent of Africa and the world. Um, I'll come back to uh, our speakers here. Um, what is your take on the advent of social media over the past decade or so uh, in promoting content, in uh, the carrying of news, as well as in the telling of the African story? Because you realize we are in a time of our generation where telling story has become very diversified. People are able to sell themselves, especially during this period of the lockdown, we've had so many 
celebrities being on earth as a, as a result of social media just by churning out their own social media content or their content on social media either on TikTok or Instagram they've been able to become socialites or um, media personalities uh, overnight because they were able to uh, produce content that was geared towards the demand of the people people demanding uh, um, comic materials entertainment uh, information and so on and so forth so i would love to ask you guys personally in your practice what is your thought on the advent of social media in our current generation i'll, I'll take it off from you issue in your practice you work with a number of people what do you think is the advantage for africa to tell a story with social media well um social media i would use um, a recent um a very recent, uh, what do you call it, activity that took place in Africa, uh, especially West Africa, mm. as an example, like the NSAS protest. Okay. Now, without social media, nobody would have heard anything was happening in Africa or West Africa for that matter, because mm. they would have regulated how the media reported that particular um, incident. Okay. Now, casting your mind far back as when I started on social media, that's back um, as far back as 2007. Okay. How many people were on social media? Mm. How many people knew there was something like Facebook? Right. And how many people wanted to be on Facebook? Mm. And for what reason? Now, when you take your mind back, you realize that around 2007, only about, um, I think, 5,000 to 10,000 people were active in the Ghanaian region as at um, that time, as far as social media is concerned. Now, if you take your mind back more than um, 13 years later, that's 2020, right. you realize that internet, even just the internet users in Ghana are like 14.76 million. Mm. How many people are in Ghana? What's our population? We are. Um, about 30 plus, 30 million plus. Yeah. So if 14.76 million are on the internet, not just not social media, but the general internet, internet, it means that half of the population of the country are actually watching mm -hmm. and can talk mm -hmm. and can access information and right. can be able to um, communicate remotely. You, you get me? Yeah. So it means that uh, we are able to do certain things we weren't able to do as far back as um, 2007. So social, the advent of social media has helped us, you know, to connect. You understand? Right. And now 14.76 million people are on the internet. If we are to vote on the internet alone, if you are to elect a president on the internet alone, we can. Because how many people registered for the did the voters registration mm. you understand what I'm saying so it means that if we are just to select um, precedents on the internet we can do it and it will be justifiable for Ghana you understand so social media in itself has helped us you know the, has, has helped us connect mm. and make certain um, things that are that are to be controlled and you know confined. What would other have been censored? Censored is open. To, it's open to everyone to see. You know, interesting. Restricted. Interesting. We'll go for a quick break. We'll yeah. be right back and then we'll take the take of our other guests. I believe in Africa. I believe in. Africa. I'm Eunice Mano Bagi, the correspondent from Nigeria. Keep watching Yali TV. I believe. I'm Adikalias Kamara from Sierra Leone. Keep watching Yali TV. I believe in love. My name is Absa Samba, a correspondent from the Gambia. Keep watching Yali TV. So, uh, welcome back from that short break. So, we we have our four guests uh, for the first panel in the studio. Uh, it's good to have you, Alfred. Good to so, be here. Uh, Alfred is the the morning show host on the, the that's three FM. Is also a news anchor on uh, TV3, one of Ghana's primetime televisions. And uh, he's also a Mandela Washington fellow. It's someone who has really inspired us in the media space, not only in Ghana, but across Africa. It's good to have you. Good to be here. Thank y you. Yesterday, I, I watched your uh, 
uh, your, your show, which was the debate. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, one of the uh, parliamentary uh, aspirants. Yeah. Uh, it was great. Very, very, very rowdy, chaotic, Absolutely. but very controlled, and that's what I really enjoyed. And Thank it's you. one of the qualities that really inspires us. Thank you so much for what you do. Thank you very much. Yeah. I appreciate so, it. So, um, back to you, Apollo, as we were discussing earlier, what do you think is the advantage from where you stand as, as a, a journalist in one of the regions of uh, Ghana uh, to say one of the, 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 the provinces of Africa as a whole? What is your outlook when it comes to social media or digital media in Africa today? Looking at yesteryears, where there was no Facebook, um, YouTube was on the low, we didn't have um, Instagram, we didn't have Twitter, but today we have all those platforms. Now we have blogs, which are even more louder than some of the traditional media channels. What is your take on social media or digital media in today's Africa? Thank you. I'll be basing most of it on digital media. Okay. I want the broader aspect. Um, one of the things we should know is that in every situation, change must come one way or the other. Mm. And digital media has actually changed the face of reporting, the face of journalism. Mm. Um, there were days where you, you see people going in for the newsstands but right. today for newspapers and all for newspapers and go but today you sit with your phone the whole day and you are okay you get whatever it is uh, news and go you get anything the importance here is accessibility like i said in my intro the most important thing anywhere else is for us to be able to assess is to be able to tell our story and I don't know how many people would have been able to tell their stories through the traditional media, if not for digital media. I, for instance, what we are doing over here, uh, this one uh, example, one piece of digital media. I don't know how we would be able to sit on TV if not for digital media. So my take is a very simple one. The media space is changing and digital media is actually becoming the core of it. It is as if it is becoming the pivot. You, you watch how things are. People don't even get enough time to watch their televisions. Mm. People are mostly glued to their mobile phones. People are mostly glued to the screens of their desktops and laptops connected to the internet that is where we get most of our information it comes with its own cost and its own problems but the advantage is that we are able to share we are able to copy and we are able to modify whatever information is put out there so i think yes it is good it is good uh, it is something we should all be trying to take part in um, because like i said the revolution we are moving from the industrial age we are going slowly into the information age and for the information age to be well established it will come from digital media interesting point i'll read um the fifth some points from the fifth uh, affluence survey africa's report which was released in september 13 it says despite internet penetration on the continent lagging behind in other regions uh, of the world, Africa's affluent population has embraced digital technology more rapidly than their European counterparts. I would love to ask you, I mean, in Ghana, even though we have access to the internet in the urban and peri-urban areas, you and I know that we have serious challenges with internet connectivity. How has that affected your practice over the years working in uh, uh, the digital media space? And I'd love to know which digital media space you work in because you didn't mention it earlier. <laughs> okay, so new media has opened up an independent platform for information. Mm. And like you said, and the, my other panelists also said, um, previously with print media, it's censored. It was usually censored by political parties. Mm -hmm. But in the case of 
digitalization it's open now people can consume create content anywhere anytime mm. without any rigid um, legalization yeah. in, in place restrictions and restrictions in place when but now we have restrictions what, from facebook twitter and uh, youtube I, I think it's necessary like there's a pros and cons to everything two sides of a coin always it's necessary because um as human beings we tend to overreach uh <laughs> our capabilities or whatever we are supposed to do mm. and in my in my area as a digital um PR strategist you are able to reach brands more you know be able to advertise for our clients more and it's cheaper and affordable compared to previously you had to go and buy ad space in the print media and you are not even sure you are going to you know sell all the newspapers so how do you even evaluate the data how do you you know look at um foresee for, um how your the message the, the reach and the impact it was it was it was tedious mm. it was tedious but with digital media you can do all these things and also when you look at um looking at the low cost or cost effectiveness of digital media in the PR space we have SEM SEO for those who don't know SEO is search engine optimization right. so growing, growing your content organically so if i should i'm an seo content writer if i should write uh, content for your website i'm making sure that it appears at least on the first three pages of google so i'm i'm practically helping your article or your website to rank mm -hmm. higher mm -hmm. on google okay. search and it's also known that it's also known that most people don't go beyond the first three pages on google mm -hmm. search mm -hmm. i mean if you can't find what you're looking on on these first three pages, you are going to move on to the next person, and it's free. So when you search for a word on Google, and the very first two, um, the first um, article that comes up, yes. I'd say, and the one on the side, they are paid for. That's SEM. It's paid for, and even with that paid for, the advertiser does not pay unless you click okay. on it. So yeah, you just bid for ad space and it's there. So unless the um the person clicks for it before you pay for it. So I mean it's really cost effective. And the rest below them is organically generated. Okay. So you don't pay to ha to reach your audience. You don't pay to reach your target audience. So when it comes to social media in the PL space, it has been a blessing. Mm. You know, because we can manipulate. You know, with our print media, it's all about pictures and words. Now we have videos, we have animations. We can engage our audience much, much better. And even get feedback. And get feedback, which is very important in our work. You wouldn't want to run a social media campaign, and at the end of the day, you don't know how many people view, how view, many clicks. You you can't go back to your um your clients and go like oh this is this is what we did this is how much i spent your money and this is the return you are get and um, you're getting That's sales were boosted by this percentage okay. you can't do all that with the print media so interesting it, but the, the place of um, um, internet connectivity as i was reading from the report plays a key role um for instance one of the challenges uh, during the programs that we had earlier was connectivity trying to connect speakers from the different African countries. At the point, we're having issues that we have to just make them do pre-recorded videos for us to have smooth uh, connections. And also in some other African countries, it's very expensive to access data. Um, don't you see that being a, a challenge to the practice? It is a challenge, but it doesn't stop us. Or it's not stopping the growth of the internet or social media. Mm. When it comes to focusing on the penal space even if one person has internet word of mouth works faster for us too okay. i mean you believe what your friend said about a brand than what um a celebrity is endorsing about that brand interesting 
So when you are going to get something, you you ask, oh, you saw Nanama doing the high sense video, but you went to Koku's room and saw him using a high sense fridge. So you go to Koku, Koku, how is it like? And that will go much more deeper into informing your decision in your buying process okay. than the celebrity. So it's it's a challenge. It's a new space we are discovering, especially for Africans. Mm. And looking at how developmental issues also go to. It's a new space. But it's totally working in our favor at the same time. Interesting. Um, Alfredo, um, you are in the traditional uh, media space. And yeah. per reports and research, now traditional media um, houses are veering into the digital space to reach more. And actually, there's proof that the traditional media uh, channels or stations are actually reaching more viewers or more followers through digital media. What has been your experience being in the space? All right, thank you. Thank you very much. And that's really true because. Um, research by the researchgate.com the last time we checked about uh, some six months ago indicated that traditional media on a scale of 1 to 100 is patronized by just 55 percent a drop of about 30 percent in the same period last year so there's a growing army of patrons of the digital space right and for me personally and where i work at tv3 we acknowledge the evolution mm -hmm. that is coming into this media space especially so what we have done is to leverage on the advantage of the digital space so instead of losing out on viewers and on revenue which which you mentioned because mm -hmm. a lot of going? advertisers are now cutting down their budget to traditional media and sharing same budget on digital advertising. So for instance, not to mention any brand, say Bluecrest because we're here. Yeah. If Bluecrest used to spend 60,000 CDs on advertising on say traditional media, now because of the growing patronage of the digital space, you would have them cut their budget by say, 50%. 50%. So they do 30,000 on traditional media, mm -hmm. 30,000 on digital media space. Yeah. Here's the reason why, and all the speakers have touched on it. It's very easy to measure the reach and impact. If you put a video on Facebook or Instagram or YouTube, you would know the number of people who have viewed it. Right. As against you now paying another <laughs> research company to do a research on traditional media right. and their reach and influence, mm. right? So you have just a couple of you know research companies, Jopol and others, yeah. put out data about which traditional media is the best watched mm -hmm. or most patronized. Right. It's on that basis that a lot of these advertising companies, you know, make their decisions on where to place which, their adverts which and which time zone to mm. place their adverts. There are limitations to the digital space, and I think that um, the previous speakers touched on a number of them. Access, and you mentioned it as well, access, reliability, and affordability. Yeah, it's, it's, the reliability bit is the experience that you share. And, and at the point, even credibility. Because True. anyone can just hop on Absolutely. and start broadcasting. True. And you know, in terms of access, here in Ghana, you have the NCA and other bodies put out statistics about me that's mobile phone penetration. Mm -hmm. The What we don't do is to break down the statistics to understand exactly what that means. So if we say we have like 50 million people having access to mobile phones, we don't know if it's across all 16 regions, whether it's one person per mobile phone that they counted, because a lot of people have five, three, two minimum mobile phones. Right. Right. And even the iPads and other things that we use also are connected to one SIM or the other. So if you go to the telcos <laughs> and you take their data and you tell me that, because they say they have 80 million subscribers, it means that's a reflection of how people are hooked onto digital space. That's wrong. 
Okay, so all of those things, in my view, are some of the limitations. And these people who dwell on such data are aware, some are not. But the threat to traditional media is clear. And you either innovate or die. And that's where, for me, I am, I am happy about what I'm seeing. Not only at TV3, I can speak of other media houses in Ghana who are also evolving. So for us at TV3, we, we, we have created a digital department altogether. Wow which is creating digital content for our other digital platforms. So you have short videos instead of, even though we stream the full news bulletin on Facebook, yeah, yeah, you'll have some short, short videos that people can easily click like 30 seconds with what happened at the IOS was work on yes. debate yesterday. It was a three hour debate, but we had just 30 seconds, 40 seconds videos that went viral. Okay, people, and as she said, people would like to rather spend less time and get all the information than because they are thinking about their data too, mm. right? Mm -hmm. And so, the how precise, concise, and straight to the point your message is is what wins uh, in this space. So yes, in my view, I think that going forward, it's going to grow because we are going into the information age, no doubt about it. Mm -hmm and as to how we balance between traditional and digital media mm. will determine the media houses that will stay afloat and still stay relevant in the coming days. Well, very interesting points. You know, um, in this mix of the opportunities, the challenges vis-a-vis -vis, uh, the new technology is you're going to have upgrades in the next couple Absolutely. of weeks, months. I mean, some months ago, how many people knew what Zoom was? But today, Zoom can actually boast as one of the biggest uh, uh, digital media platforms for communication and information transfer. Sure. So I'll, I'll ask you, issue. you have been in uh, uh, content development on digital media space for some time now, for seven years, as you said. For the young African, what is the opportunity? I think I'll break it along the speakers. What is the opportunity for the young African to make a living as a professional in the digital media space? If I create my content and I put it out there, what is the assurance that what I'm doing can be a practice or a profession? Source of living. A source of income or a source of living for a young African somewhere in Botswana who is who just saw your profile, heard your profile, and wants to do what you do. Yeah. So uh, use your, your experience to give us some insight in that. Okay, so um, I'm actually a poet. Okay, okay. So when I started out, um, I started out by looking at ways to promote myself because I realized that the poetry penetration in Ghana is very low. So I went on SoundCloud, for instance, and then I was... I went to learn about SoundCloud, how to penetrate with music, That's especially from stuff. this side of town, and then how to download, upload stuff, mm -hmm. how to format the stuff you've uploaded so that it reaches the people, the target audience. And so I realized that, no, there's more to this. Aside SoundCloud, I can do other things that would bring the traffic to SoundCloud. So what do I do? So then I started exploring, exploring, exploring. For the first two years, I spent not less than $600 on Facebook alone. When I say Facebook, because they, are, they own Instagram. So joint alone without knowing what I use the money for. Oh. I can't account for it. I you have for ads? For ads. I had several accounts blocked because I was trying out certain things. So I don't use my main account. I have several accounts I've created that I use to run ads for reasons that maybe if the discussion gets there, I would, I would reveal her. Uh, so along the way, I realized it. So what, back to your question, you would ask yourself as a young African that what problem are you solving? Just like the traditional media, the traditional media came to solve a problem, came to position itself in the way of um, a solution to a particular problem. And bridging the information Bridging gap. the information gap. So what exactly are you doing? There should be something that brings the attention. Like he's saying about um, TV3 putting out short videos. That's what we do at Despite Media. So 
I'm part of the team that actually look at what what should trend, what shouldn't trend. And we there are certain things that you know will trend, but you wouldn't want the public to consume that. So you actually intentionally take it out and then give them what should trend and then force it to trend. Force it to trend as positioning it in such a way that they would love it in the, in, in the, in the first place. So what are you doing? And you know, um, from our side here, when I listen to people, people would want to, you know, start in a way, you know, dress in a way to start it. All those things are good, but it's not about, uh, mostly now what I realized that it's not about how you present the content or how, how you put, how how you you put it, how you appear. It is just the information that the people need. Mm. People are on YouTube. I sleep at least the 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 the, the best time I sleep is three a.m. And you realize that you see that I'm I'm on TikTok looking at how people are creating, not enjoying the videos, but looking at how people understanding how people are creating the content, and then going to YouTube. YouTube is also evolving with TikTok and with Instagram yes. because they are in in the competition now. Right. Uh, from the research I've made. Let me uh, dive a little from the research I've made. In the next two years, Instagram is going to monetize. And so they are changing their systems. YouTube is also changing mm-hmm. to meet up. So what are you doing? Now, uh, now YouTube has a status update. It has status update. Insta- Just like Twitter a has a status update. update. As a, they started last month. Interesting. Yes. So the top high profile account get to see it before the lower account. I think the lower pro- profile account started rolling out yesterday. Okay. Yeah. So what are you doing? What exactly are you doing to solve a particular problem? I, I know a few people that run on um, food, local foods, how to prepare local foods. Okay. And I tell you, they can be making up to $2,000 a month, a month wow. just on YouTube. Wow. And, and that's if you know what you're doing and how you're doing well, how you're doing it well. You understand? Because I tell you, YouTube alone can be a whole profession for a lifetime. Just YouTube can be a whole profession. If you know what you're doing and you know how to position it well and how to do it, you understand what you're doing. I'm telling you. YouTube can be a, a living a source, a source of life. And, 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 and I can tell you, your YouTube revenue can pay about 20 workers in a particular company. Interesting. Yes. So, it's just understanding what you're doing, solving a particular problem, and just solving it, just continue solving it. People are looking for information. So, yeah, and then one, one thing you need to understand is that you have to create content people want. You have to create content, or otherwise, creating content you are going to force people to want. Mm. There's two ways. And if you are creating content people want, it means you are going to compete with a whole lot of people because everybody is creating content people want. But if you are going to create content, you are going to force people to want. They are going to do a lot of investment from the beginning, right. and then just like being a pay setter, you understand. So that's 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 how. It Interesting is. point. So if you are tuned to us right now, this is the Young Africa Media Summit Day Two, and we are having a discussion on digital media in Africa today, the way forward. And he just shared some critical information with us. If you are watching. Uh, there's an opportunity for young Africans to really diversify across the various sectors. You don't need to just do uh, um, news or entertainment. There is agriculture, there is technology, there is health, there's education. There are many, many sectors that need to be covered. And you just give some nuggets of information. You can make social media or digital media um, a life, you are a source of livelihood. I would love to find out from you, um, uh, Mr. Jube. You are in the traditional media, you're on radio. Don't you feel threatened by a youngster who just comes <laughs> in 2020 because everybody was at home due to COVID-19? The guy is a celebrity. You have been working for the past five years. People don't even know you beyond uh, your your community. But this guy just comes with his phone. He does a few... Um, some few uh, um, uh, co- content uploads, and the guy is a global sensation. <laughs> Take for instance this guy who sang uh, "I'm a Good." Uh, what's his name again? Yeah, that's, um, A-Y-P-O-Y. A-Y-P-O-Y. He was an <laughs> instant sensation. <laughs> Within six months, he was global. He was all over the place. Yeah. And these are other professionals like yourself who have been working so hard. You follow the ethics. You follow the standards of your practice, 
and you are still yet to be known outside the shores of Ghana. Don't you feel threatened by the advent of digital technology vis-a-vis -vis the practice of the good old uh, traditional media? Yes, everyone will feel threatened once your livelihood is one way or the other about taking about to be taken away from you. <laughs> Alfred says something, he said innovate or die. die. You see. So what are some of the new ways people are actually putting their information out there? That is why digital media is and the best thing is that it is not very censored uh, as we've all discussed. It is not uh, restricted restricted like the traditional media. Yes, we know you go to certain countries and uh, some of the social media platforms are one way or the other being banned. But all the same... Now we have fact checkers who, uh, yes. if, if, you, if you put something that does not follow uh, uh, guidelines, it will be flagged. It, yes. So you will feel threatened. But then the most important thing is that you wouldn't want to stay at one place for, for life. Once you realize this is what all people are doing, you know, this thing started, I remember, when people were actually using TuneIn to stream their radio programs. Yes. Then it, get, it, it got to a point, people were shunned TuneIn right. and it started using other software. One of the things I was, I was thinking of saying is about opportunities for uh, software developers. Yes. Someone realizes that TuneIn is making it. So, come on, let me also create something. Um, you can, like uh, Ishu said, you can actually decide to go how everyone is going. It, it means you have a lot of people to compete with. But then what if you can put something out there and people will be forced to want what you have put over you, you, you are putting over there. So I'm looking at it also from this direction where we have um, a number of these, uh, of I, I, I don't know how many traditional media houses in Ghana now, at least the big ones, who are actually not moving into the digital ones. Because once you remain over there as, a, as let me use it, a traditionalist, you are going to have problems. The world is changing, I, I keep saying this. And, and <laughs> I didn't hear that. The world is changing and we must also change with it so yes you feel threatened but the threat will be from yourself i think we would only be traced to ourselves if tv3 is doing it why would i not try to also do it and look at how to do it better in my own unique way one of the things to do and which is um one of the problems with digital media is where we can copy and modify we can copy and modify there you see people doing almost the same thing. I, I, I've been watching, uh, excuse me to say, teacher Kwejo and one other uh, Kwejo guy. Yes, all of you know, they do almost the same thing, but they still have their audience. Have the audience. Yes, they still have their audience. So I think when you, f you feel threatened, then you need to move. When the water is too hot for you, you just have to find a, a, a cooler one to move into or else you will die over there so like our friend said once again innovate or die you will feel threatened but you don't have to remain in there if only you want to move ahead then you need to look at what others are actually doing and moving there as well okay interesting you know the discussion is getting more interesting but our time is also growing closer and closer to an end for the next panel so um Moving from uh, Grace to um, to uh, um, Alfred, I'd love to find out from you. We always we've had issues with how the Western media tells the African story. Mm -hmm. Could digital media be just that innovation that we've been waiting for to tell our story the way we want, without waiting for CNN to come all the way from? America to come with their crew to our towns, especially in the case of young Africans who are doing so much. In the Yali space alone, there's so much going on from uh, community projects, um, social interventions, government engagement, policy, advocacy, um, uh, entrepreneurship and business development. So much is going on in the, in the youth, uh, in the youth uh, uh, space or uh, 
population or populace of Africa. Is digital media that solution for us to begin to tell our story the way we want to tell it? Ladies first. Yeah, ladies first. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I believe digital media is the way to tell the African story now. Okay. Um, because as we've all spoken on the, the far-reaching arms of digital media and the internet, it's very, very, very important for the African to be out there telling their stories mm. on it. So we just have to be mindful of what we put out there. I always see it. I always tell everyone I come across to, the internet never forgets. Never. So far as the internet is running, whatever you put out there is in a cloud somewhere, waiting to be retracted and used and reused and reproduced. It's always there. So whatever story you are putting out there about yourself, about Africa, about us as a people, we have to be mindful of how we constructed, of how we, we, we tell our story. So for, for us as Africans, young Africans, we should be very in, much invested in digital media. We should always learn. I didn't start from the digital side. Um, when I started, when I drew my um, career plan, right. It was to just be a PL profit, um, uh, officer. Mm. And then I worked with Paul's Ghana and I was I opened remember. to the possibility of digital PR. I, I had no idea. I wasn't taught in school. Mm -hmm. They just brushed on new mm. media. But then I enter into this space and I'm like, okay, in a few years, um, the social media manager, the digital marketing officer is going to have my job. And probably the content developer. Yes, he's going to have my job. Absolutely. Because nobody's going to hire me to go and buy ad space in the <laughs> newspaper anymore or, or create a you know, press conference anymore if they can just have, a, if the institution can just put do a live their press from the office. on Twitter. They can just put their press release on Twitter. No one's going to hire me to do that. So I had to, like, you know, think fast. I had to learn. Take courses on Google. Yeah, you know, digital courses for free on Google. And you can also get certification. You always have to improve yourself all the time. As Africans, we cannot wait for someone to come and tell our story, for someone to come and do what we have to do. And you have to do it well. So to do it well, you need to improve, you need to learn. So I think the digital space is here to stay. It's, it's going to get crazier and crazier as it goes. And you have to move with the trends as quickly as it comes. As quickly as, you, you never stop learning when you're in the digital space. If someone says, oh, I got this certification in 2010. By 2012, it's old. You're outdated. You need to always be on the move in our digital space. Alfred, your take? Well, I just want to add a bit to it. She said it all. Um, I was actually scared when I saw a robot journalist. It's going to wow. be deployed. Yeah, um, we, should, we should look out for him. You know, so that tells you that even for us, we, our job will be extinct. Um, all things being equal, if things stay the way they are. But Interesting, Alfred. Just yeah. yesterday, I am... Um, I was talking about our photographer better and we're saying there's going to be a time where we even have um, uh, robots uh, photographers so that you know we don't need we do actually we have ah, okay. we do. so there's a so, obviously <laughs> I mean so it's getting interesting right. and scary <laughs> so yeah the, the 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 digital or virtual space um, the possibilities are endless as to how for young Africans we channel those possibilities. I think all my colleagues have touched on it. It's important, you know, because unrestricted access or unlimited freedom comes with its own disadvantages. And there are very good examples of how people, young Africans, are using the digital space to propagate the good things, not only about Ghana, but on the continent. I mean, go on YouTube, 
there's this gentleman who travels around, mm-hmm. yeah. a young man, I don't know, I've been trying to remember Mr. his name. He's a Ghanaian, yeah. but he's gone all across the continent and he's telling the African story on YouTube. And he has over 5 million subscribers or so. Yeah. That is the way to go. You know, traditional media can do their bit, but there's a limited viewership for mm-hmm. traditional media. Admittedly, unless you are streaming the same content, you know, online. But even that, if you have some something in the content that is not meant to be, do you be flat? And, and the, you don't have the freedom because there's Absolutely. a schedule, so you cannot show the same thing True. over and over again. So, the so is low. honestly, I think that it is the value addition, number one, and the guidance, and I think we should be intentional about capitalizing on the advantages of the digital space. You shouldn't just be in it. In fact, there are countries that have invested in growing their youth to take advantage of the digital evolution. Well, we are here. I mean, we're, we're just talking. I mean, we, we're very good at doing so. So I am hoping that aside all the modules that every government gone by and present and yet to come, are rolling out or intend to roll out. I haven't seen anything on youth in digital development or youth amazing. in amazing. There was some youth in ICT. When I went, all I saw was they doing hardware, 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 hardware. Who 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 does that? But I mean, we we should just think, and I'm just hoping that all of these things we've said would inform someone about the pattern and where we're going as young people. And then be able to leverage on the energies and the passion, the abilities of the young people in this country and on the continent. Yeah. Interesting. Now I'll, I'll add my voice to what you said. Honestly and intentionally, Yale TV with his partners, uh, Blue. I can say for a fact, Bluecrest uh, University College have uh, agreed to roll out a program which we call the Young Africa Media Fellowship, which will be intentionally having some of these ingredients of information and grooming included so that we will be able to develop ourselves to take advantage of the space because uh, if someone can make as much as two thousand dollars a month and this is his passion the guy is a passionate guy who develops content what is he doing working as a factory hand in a company that pays him woefully less than a hundred dollars a month so it's important that we we will take advantage of using what we have we have the yali network we have yali tv now we are using this as a platform so just stick and stay with us uh, in the next couple of weeks you'll be hearing more information and in the second panel actually we'll be having a discussion around that we want to really use the advantage of what we have to get what we really need as a continent um our speakers, I mean, it's been exciting having you. We'd love you to give your last words in 30 seconds or a minute each. What you want Africa to hear from you as a take home with regards to um, digital media? Um, if, if you ask me, I would, I would be very frank with you again on the fact, on the financial aspect, how important it is to know that what the digital media is doing now is to make you very very uh, rich if you are doing the right thing mm. and i'm telling you i have our six people six clients that i collect revenues for every month that make more that that, that make close to three thousand dollars wow every month interesting yes that's and about uh that's, about about six. Six. that's almost like eighteen eighteen thousand yes, cities i'm telling Canada you cities. And we have partnership with banks that are able to take the revenues for us like you know very um, well so that's what i'm saying that like there are people who are making money for doing the right thing mm. and if you are doing the right thing if you know how to do the right thing and you are doing it and you are passionate and consistent about it i'm telling you give yourself six months what is one year a lot of people have to leave their job there are a lot of people that has to leave their job and if you want me to leave a last message i would tell everybody to go to content creation everybody has to look at the next thing the world is looking at or else 
you'll be behind what the world uh, where the world is going. going. If you don't look at the next thing the world is looking at, you'll be behind where the world is going. Powerful quote. Yeah. Apollo. Yes, like I said earlier, the world is changing. We are moving into the information age and it's very important for us as young Africans to understand that if we want to stay 100 years back, it will be very woeful, not just to us, but the generations to come. I am also looking at it that, it, you know, it's not just about the knowledge, it is not just about talking about it. Um, we need all hands on deck. Government, what are they actually putting in place when it comes to digital media? We've seen a lot of investments in technology from other countries. Our uh, our government's doing the same thing. And are they even direct the few ones they have put in place, are they actually directing it to the right place? Uh, it's not we, we, we've seen where monies have been placed into things that don't bring anything to us. What if our governments move from that direction? Look at the youth as a potential partner in development, not just about uh, they wanting to you know, get something from government, but what if government can use them to get um, all hands on deck for development? That, that is one of the things we are lacking. And also, I would also want to end with this, that it is important to go into partnerships. We, there are people who are very good with YouTube they're not very good with uh, Facebook. People are very good with Facebook and not very good with YouTube. What happens? We, uh, can these people come together, okay. form a company? What would they do about it? <laughs> and we see we've not been seeing much of this right. because sharing the profits be uh, became the most important thing in bringing people together. And I think that shouldn't be it. Growth should be the issue, but not just about sharing the profits immediately. The profits come. Thank you. Interesting. If we your parting words, um, Africa sh should not be afraid of change. I mean, change is the only constant in everything. And as the traditional media is shifting into the new media space, we should be ready to embrace the opportunities and use it to our advantage. But should be very mindful of the other side of this coin in telling our story. We should not lose our Africanness, our uniqueness, trying to mimic other cultures and doing things the other way. We are still Africans. Let's go out there and tell our story the African way. On this new platform called the new media yes let's go out there and tell the african story how we yes alfred uh, just add on to it I mean, <laughs> that, <laughs> develop the passion i think you said that and 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 be very open to learning and be intentional and let's all stay committed to growing ourselves individually that's the only way yes. We can collectively make gains from this digital space. Thank you. Well, and I leave it to the point. <laughs> <laughs> All points have this. Have so, uh, what's, what's, you want to look like a microphone? Yeah, like Ole <laughs> so Inka. Eh? Um, no, but I I think I've had this question a, a couple of times. Yeah, why? But uh, my hair has nothing to do with. It. I, in fact, I didn't know All Points ha had it until I did mine. And maybe it comes much. with the what we do. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe you don't have time naturally. To to the like, oh, uh, I'm not a to <laughs> <laughs> I don't just believe in cutting my hair. Yeah, I'm interested. Yeah, you are denying the barbers. <laughs> <laughs> interesting. I mean, when you this is what happens when you are you having panelists who are media people. You know, they just had their own section, and Alfred couldn't just do without being. Uh, 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 interrogative, yes, a host for once. <laughs> so we, we we just ended the first panel of the day two of the Africa Media Summit, and it's been fun. 
Uh, as I said earlier, we have the opportunity to have a year-long fellowship which will culminate at the end of the year, next year, November by this time, with the Africa, the Young African Media Summit 2021. So be on the lookout. We'll be having a discussion in the next panel on the Young Africa Media Fellowship. But before we go into the next panel, I would love to say once again a very big thank you to you guys for making time to be with us. I know Alfred, you are supposed to be on air. I know you have a program coming up issue. I know you are supposed to be behind your computer. And you let your morning show right here for all the way from Go to join us in the studio. Wow. Very impressive. Thank you so much for the sacrifice you made. Our viewers, I just wanted to know that there was a lot of sacrifice that was made for you to have the information you had. So make sure you take notes. Watch this program again and again and pick notes from everything that was shared. And I trust you. And I trust that out of the information they get, they gave out, you'll be able to make a livelihood. I think before we go, sorry to catch you. But that's fine. Um, I just want, I wish this this thing is a big thing we are doing. Uh, this uh, Young Africa Summit is a big thing we are doing. I just wish we we are um, everyone watching is able to be committed to it very well, even the uh, the people behind it to make it happen here be committed to it very well because through this means we can reach a whole lot of people we we don't we have no idea the impact we are making around the world so please i just i just i just feel like passing that information i'm being honest because you know i i'm behind at most of the time mm. i do one million reach ads every week and i know like how things reach people how people react to things and i know how this thing is reaching some if it reaches 10 people we are making some serious right. impact out there uh, so i i guess it's a point, like, it's yeah. a point. i'm telling you <laughs> <laughs> also point i mean uh, just to add to that this program is reaching the yale network which is over 650,000 strong yeah. and other viewers without the yale network and it doesn't end yet that's a good part We'll be doing a rebroadcast in December of all the programs we did for Yali Aten. So we'll be having a lot of partnerships around this uh, fellowship to ensure that we have the right people. So you'll be having to hear from all these panelists again in our mentorship programs that will be announced in January 2021. Thank you very much for st uh, staying with us. We'll be right back. What we're going to be doing now is we'll be showing some of the productions that Yali TV has done. We're also going to be giving opportunity to young Africans to develop content. Uh, there's a content challenge that we are having, which will commence officially from today and will close on the 28th of December. So you have the opportunity to visit our page on uh, www.yaletvonline.com. We have a page, uh, the Young Africa Media Summit. Go there. There is an application link. Drop your videos. Drop the trailers of your videos or just an episode of what you do. The team will be going through it and the selection process will be done. We'll be discussing that when we come back in the second panel. But we have some highlights of some of the productions of Yali TV. And once we are done showing some of them, we also have a word from some of our correspondents. Once we are done with that, we'll come into the second panel. Stick and stay tuned as we go into that next. <laughs> Welcome to Yali TV, your premier television channel for youth all around the world. The Young African Leaders Initiative is such an amazing experience. And right here on Yali TV, you have had the opportunity to meet young Africans who participated in this program. So we have lined up exciting segments just for you. Watch out for the Yali experience, Yali time with the experts and Yali news. Yali, Yali, Yali. Yali, Yali, Yali.
Kigali experience. And in this segment, we'll be meeting amazing alumni who are transforming the world. We're going to meet change makers, people who have participated in the Young African Leadership Initiative. I am Rita Sunam Gaglu, uh, currently the Executive Director of No Limits Charity Organization. I'm also the current president of um, Akala Boni Liu Club. I'm Nana Osen Kwantabisa. I'm a, a traditional ruler from Lower Axim traditional area of the Western region where the oil and gas is being mined. I'm a social entrepreneur as well as a, a philanthropist. I grew up in the western region of Ghana, Takradi, with my parents and then with my siblings. I'm currently with a tech and innovation hub called iSpace Foundation and I'm using my skills, I'm using my resources that I gained at Yali to help other entrepreneurs mm. during our incubation and then our accelerator programs. I'm also the business development coach, so I take these entrepreneurs through the business model canvas, which we're taking through at Yali, through writing business plans through pitching skills. So getting uh, Yali was another step, because I used to be a very shy person. Um, but coming to Yali, uh, it gave me a lot of exposure. It was a great experience for me. I loved it. I met so many people. And the practicality of entrepreneurship was broken down for us. It was a very intensive program. It enabled me to become self-confident more. So Yali, experience that is what i went through mm. I believe in africa welcome to yali time with the expert on every episode we bring you experts in different fields of society it is important that we hear from experts it is important that we learn the best practices in all of our endeavors jobs. Uh, a, a large percentage of the population is working in the informal sector and so everyone is forced to be an entrepreneur. You know, I've never met so many entrepreneurs until I moved to Ghana. 90% of the population is entre entrepreneur, but it's in fact because people have to be, not necessarily because people want to be. So you don't, it, it drives an individual to always need to be thinking and working and trading and hustling. Even for the flower rose, it has tons on it. But it's a very beautiful flower. So clearly, there will be challenges, there will be the downsides. But we always have a positive story, uh, you know, spirit and story to share. Yes. Because we believe that, look at the brighter side of life. You know, count your blessings in, in, in everything that you do. So for me, it is that concept that drives me to say, whatever you put your mind to it, is possible. Yes. Whatever you conceive, believe that you can achieve. My name is Ajawa Martinson and this is Yali News from our studios in Accra, Ghana. From Ghana, West African Regional Leadership Centre reaches milestone of training more than 4,000 young leaders. In Cameroon, Yali alumni chapter members hold my Yali Family Day Holiday Camp at Inkobison, Yaoundé.
Isabel Martinson, and this is Yali News from our studios in Accra, Ghana. For today's episode, the bulletin are In Ghana, Yali West Africa hosts dialogue sessions with MasterCard Foundation scholars on the sustainability of Yali. In Japan, Yali Alumini, Ghanaian chef and social entrepreneur, Chef Elijah Amo Ado, bestowed the 2018 Takeda Foundation Young Entrepreneurship Award at the annual Takeda Symposium in Tokyo, Japan. In Ghana, Catherine Morton's Women 5 Kilometers to Storm Accra with running, walking and dancing to inspire and empower women to dare to be great. In Cameroon, Yali Alumni chapter members hold my Yali Family Day holiday camp at Inkobison, Yaoundé. Visit the West African Leadership Center and other center websites for upcoming training programs and opportunities. Also remember to visit the news page on our website for details of this news bulletin. Keep watching Yali TV. Yali TV is a dedicated media channel created by young African leaders to provide a platform for the youth in Africa to share their achievements with the rest of the world and also get the opportunity to share their thoughts and opinions on matters and issues affecting the development of our continent. My name is John Apia. Yali TV presents amazing segments that takes you into the life of young change leaders across the continent. Yali News, Yali Time with the Experts, Yali Experience, and much more. I believe in Africa. Are you a youth leader, civic leader, entrepreneur, or involved in policy making? Yali TV is here for you. Follow us on all social media pages or visit our page www.yalitvonline.com. Don't miss a day. Yali TV inspiring leadership. Keep watching Yali TV. Yali, Yali, Yali. I believe in our... Welcome back from the break. I hope you had a very exciting moment watching some of our productions that Yali TV has done over the, co the last couple of months. Um, during the COVID-19 restrictions and the lockdowns, we had the opportunity to launch one of our initiatives it was called the Yali Eye Report. As a result of our report, we reached more than 25 African countries where we spoke to the leadership of our alumni chapters of the Mandela Washington Fellowship and the regional leadership um, centers. We had our alumni leaders speak on their initiatives, their events, some of the interventions that they were, they were running on during the uh, COVID-19 period. Also, as a result of that, we've had productions such as the Yali I Report, We've had we have the Yali Eye Report, we've had the time with the experts, we've had the Yali Experience. And today we are having the Yali uh, 10 years anniversary celebration and it's been so exciting. We've had 19 productions over the past three months uh, just to celebrate the 10 years anniversary of Yali. And as a result of that, we've had a number of partners. We have Blue Crest University College, We've had a number of them. Today, in the second panel of today's section, we have some of our partners who have been 
uh, supporting the program up to this last edition of the first phase of our celebration. We have in the studio three distinguished personalities. Uh, all things being equal, we'll have the Corporate Affairs Manager of Yali TV joining us as well. We'll go for a quick break and then right after that, I'll introduce our guests. I believe in Africa. I believe in Africa. Mano Baggy, the correspondent from Nigeria. Keep watching Yali TV. I'm Adikali Eskamara from Sierra Leone. Keep watching Yali TV. I believe in Africa. My name is Absa Samba, a correspondent from the Gambia. Keep watching Yali TV. Africa. I'm Milam Leticia, correspondent from Cameroon. Welcome back from that short break. So I'll use the opportunity to introduce my guest in the studio. I have no other than Mama Lou, so we call her, but she's called Sherry Thompson. She is a consultant and she will tell us more about what she does. Mama Lou, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> You've been with us. Uh, at the more baby. of what I do, you really want me to start with all of what I've been doing? Uh, <laughs> uh, you don't want to do that one. <laughs> we also have with us um, a distinguished family. Uh, they are the co-founders of the Pan, uh, the Pan African Leadership, it's a Pan African Youth Leadership Association, Pela. Uh, we have Reverend Terry um, Ofori. Ofori and Dr. David. Nana David, David Nana Ofori. Ofori. Okay, thank you for joining us. Yeah, you're welcome. You look gorgeous. Thank you. <laughs> you, too. you look, you look <laughs> very African. Yes. I, I'm looking very Western. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That is a distinguished between the two. Yeah, that's exactly what we are talking about. And that makes a mix, right? Yeah. <laughs> we have a mix here. Yeah. It's a global reality. Very inclusive. Yeah. Very inclusive. Yeah. We are we are very excited. I mean, um, talking about uh, the the ten years anniversary celebration of Yali, um, I'll start with um, Sherry Thompson. You have been such a personality. Um, that has driven a lot of young enterprises, initiatives. Since I've known you, I mean, I've been following you, you, you power so many initiatives. Please tell us what you do. You want to know what you do. <laughs> you don't, we don't have time. Yeah, I mean, Seriously, we don't. As have much, time. as little as you can. Okay. Just so, tell us about what you do. Um, in the space of sanitation, because that's why they're calling me Mama Lou, um, I advocate for toilet sanitation. Um, one of the things I found very disturbing was when we would actually build a school without toilets. What do we teach our kids to do? You know, no more pooping like puppies or dumping like dogs. We're human beings with dignity. So you can't build a school without a toilet facility. It's not possible. And then you have young ladies who go into their uh, puberty and menstrual serious. cycles yeah. and they don't what have do a toilet. Do? What do they do? They stay home. So we noticed that our young women were staying home because they can't deal with that situation in school because there was no toilets. So that's one of the things that I'm passionate about. Right. Okay, I've lost friends because I started talking about that stuff at the dinner table. <laughs> <laughs> The next thing I'm passionate about is renewable energy. Okay. And uh, 19, no, 2015, I won the Negawatt competition for energy efficiency. Negawatt was a World Bank competition that basically addressed resource efficiency and energy efficiency. Right. And we were in the middle of Dumso. Mm -hmm. So we were excited about trying to figure out what to do with that little energy crisis mm. and I came up with sun shade energy and it's separate words sun shade energy you can google it and uh, things come up five years later I'm still looking for prototype development funding but that's why young people gravitate towards me because I'm struggling just like they are <laughs> <laughs> I'm struggling too okay so um, it's not easy trying to start a company it's not easy trying to start four companies, but I'm a conglomerate in the making. Mm. 2018, uh, I was made brand ambassador, made in Ghana okay. goods. 
I think they tapped me for that because I had been looking at the trade in Africa, within Africa, and we started out with a, a piece called the Kenya Trade Expo Ghana, KTEG. And we had Kenyans come and show us what they were making, their stuff, and they, we showed them what we were making. And we were actually the first two companies, two countries, to sign the AFTEC, the Africa Continental Free Trade, Trade Agreement. We're up there as one and two because of those bilaterals, they were pretty strong, and we've been having a good time with that. So trade is the, the, the next thing I do, and it's not only product trade, but services okay. trade, and I just finished uh, facilitating a services trade piece okay. where Ghanaians can actually go and uh, be part of a telecommunication group okay. in UK and make pounds. Wow. <laughs> awesome. So when they come back, they can build their homes, they can put their kids through school, right. you know. And so that's a part and parcel of what we've always had. We've always had human resource that were skilled, that knew what to do and when to do it. Coming back, though, I am for Made in Ghana, Made in Africa, and I really want us to concentrate on making our own stuff right. and uh, working with our own things. Right. In media, Absolutely. Uh, we got to tell our own story. That's it. Digital media, we have to tell our own story. Uh, social media, we have to talk about our own situation, circumstances. We have to build our own content. I am a WhatsApper. I got to WhatsApp and it was like, you know, I don't do Instagram. Facebook, I'm not enamored with. I, I got Facebook for business, but uh, no, not happening. Twitter, I'm not tweeting because the last guy <laughs> that was president <laughs> was... <laughs> such a troll on that piece that I just no I'm, I'm not going to go there okay. Snapchat that's not for me I'm not trying to Snapchat anybody and so LinkedIn every now and then I'll get on but I'm not really happy with that either because it's, it's just, it just didn't fit me WhatsApp when it was created I was like yeah this fits me so that's where I am right now I have over 40 chat groups and I literally wake up at 5 o'clock in the morning, don't get down until 10.30 in the morning, engaging with people on WhatsApp. Um, it is the fastest growing social media platform in Africa. I think it's the most effective communicating tool. Mm -hmm. For instance, with Yali TV, our operational teams operate on WhatsApp. Yeah. So we have Yali TV, uh, Cote d'Ivoire, Yale TV, Liberia, and then yeah. we have Yale TV uh, workroom. So we want to give information to oof, the team oof, in, oof, oof, in the countries we just communicate. So I think it. I signed with you so much. It's, yeah. a, it's a good working tool uh, as well as for fun as well. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, my, Madam Sherry, we'll come back to you for your take on the substantive issue for discussion. But we'll go to um, the euphories. Uh, we'll start with ladies first as well. right. so reverend tell us about yourself what do you do and what is really about and then we'll have um, uh, doctor also um, add, add up some few so about yourself as an individual what you do professionally and a little bit about Pela. then we'll have doc talk about what he does as a professional and then you also talk a little bit about Pela. okay uh, i'm reverend terry ofori um I am an ordained Presbyterian uh, USA minister, and I'm a chaplain currently, and a director of religious and spiritual life at Earth Science College in Pennsylvania. So I teach ethics, uh, vocational discernment, and I also do spiritual direction and pastoral care. And so um, I actually came to Ghana this year, I've been previously, uh, to join my husband um, as we were planning on working on our PALA project, the Pan-African Youth Leadership Association, and that was supposed to be a two-week trip. 
I feel like Gilligan's Island, which was a four hour tour. <laughs> Which the weather started to, getting yeah, rough. <laughs> the yeah. tiny ship was tossed. And the country shut down um, the day before <laughs> we were supposed to return to the U.S. And so um, I've always um, been called to Africa. I've done missions here previously. And so I said, you know, I think um, there is a purpose and a plan in the pandemic. And so I sought the Lord about that. And so um, interestingly enough, I did feel uh, led to call Mama Lou, actually. I had met her on a previous trip to Ghana, and she introduced me to Yali TV. Uh, I feel one of her ministries is connecting uh, people, right. and that is a very Absolutely important true. ministry that sometimes is overlooked, but I believe that that's one of her gifts. And so here we are today because of her connection, uh, and we are with the Pan-African Youth Leadership Association, which uh, we have uh, three sort of philosophies about restoration, reconnection, and reconciliation between Africans on the continent and in the diaspora. Uh, And the underpinning of those three philosophies is really Sankofa, which means going back um, to get what you lost, and also Ubuntu, which is a collective resourcing of human resources uh, and the way that we think about what we do. I am because, you know, you are, and so we are, as opposed to an individualistic model that is more Western. So how can we as black people, uh, we say black in the diaspora, how do we as black people uh, come together uh, and really make change, but also to heal? which is why we have restoration as a pillar, because there has been some fractures and some divisions, uh, some theft, some trading of human resources. Uh, And so we've been spread all over the world. So how do we then gather those human resources first? Because we're interested in that, uh, so that we can then tap into our uh, natural resources. Good. Awesome. Doc, okay. please tell us a little bit about yourself sure. and sure. and add more to the, uh, the organization's yeah. operations yeah. objectives. Okay. Well, as you know, my name is Anton Hori. Um, I am an elder and a former moderator of the Presbytery of New York City awesome. in New York. Um, I was the head of uh, Ecclesia head of uh, 97 churches. A total of 17,000 members wow. and I became the uh, also the, the uh, chair of the cabinet of uh, 300 commissioners and so I have to moderate every month uh, and that is my religious part uh, then professional side I am a sports medicine specialist wow. I am into rehabilitation medicine that's a huge market in Africa it is yeah uh, rehabilitation medicine. Um, I specialize in uh, injury recovery, uh, pain management, uh, uh, things that bring people peace and comfort, and uh, restoration of life, and uh, return to work. And so that's I mean my work. I, I also have a, a doctorate degree in occupational health and safety engineering. So I was working for OSHA for a while and. Uh, then I broke up and uh, set up my own clinics, uh, medical rehabilitation clinics in New York. Uh, I had three offices. I ran them simultaneously with uh, my colleagues. So we developed a multi-specialty medical group that provided orthopedic, neurology, pain management, physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech therapy. So that was our practice. So um, we hired uh, all medical staff all healthcare staff. Uh, I also own two home care agencies that we, right now they call it mobile medicine. So we go to people's house, those who are vulnerable and those uh, elderly and children with disability that cannot move, we go to the house and treat them. Um, I created many structures and business models in New York that supported my business. For instance, when somebody get hurt or have a motor vehicle accident, uh, and cannot 
the first six weeks is the horrible time Painful. you can move uh, your, your, your pain, your joints, your bones. and So I designed a program where I uh, created a, a, a transportation business within the medical group to go and pick up these people, bring okay, them so to the medical center. Medical pickups. Yes. So I created that as it's 1998. <laughs> now, now all the medical centers in, in New York are all copying everything that I wow. did. Yeah. Uh, also on the um, senatorial uh, life, on the political life, um, I helped New York City, uh, Bronx especially, create um, uh, 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 people who are disabled or dislocated, unemployed, uh, those with uh, health and social disparities, uh, disadvantaged group. Um, become useful in the community by creating, working uh, four hours in the morning instead of collecting a uh, um, check or uh, yeah. what you call it, an uh, unemployment check or uh, disability checks. If you can manage to do something, you can come and uh, create that, go to the parks and pick up garbage on the streets and put them in the bag and, and then you get a check. So it became a project that mm -hmm has been instituted and it's developed into those who are on welfare. They use that to help them get back to work and they feel that they can connect and, and go back to work. I also supported uh, our prison to work program mm -hmm. where we go to the prisons and treat them physically when those who are injured or have any problems. And then uh, from the Ecclesia side, we have uh, ministers and uh, churches that you know uh, uh, ministers will help them with their soul searching, spiritual development, spiritual formation. Okay, uh, and that became part of what I did. Uh, on top of it, I created a, a non for profit organization that help pastors and churches, especially immigrant pastors who come to U.S. from Ghana and Nigeria when they come in. Uh, they don't. They don't know the, the groundwork how to get their business going. So I help them to create churches and to bring people together to help uh, expand their church wow. and go get Flats. churches. So Flats I did churches. so many other things. Wow. Uh, uh, for here, awesome. he's almost as awesome. bad as I. <laughs> <laughs> so for Pela, um, we are. Uh, it's from all those activities that we both do that help us. I inspired you to bring together um, uh, a, a, a knowledge base uh, from being African-American, being pure African, naturalized American, so, and I have more of my kids being American, so <laughs> it becomes a very uh, mandatory for me, for me to really get into this. So we got sponsored by the Presbyterian Church of uh, New York City and Long Island uh, Presbyterian and they give it a seed fund to start the program. So we created a non-for-profit, and here we are expanding. We have created some few relationships uh, from uh, orphanages to widows and uh, seamstress in school to mm -hmm. uh, educational programs that we go, to the, yeah, go to the homes of uh, uh, disadvantaged children who cannot afford to go to school to start teaching them. So we're expanding our uh, territory of partnerships and I think uh, what we are trying to do in Ghana as my wife said uh, is to bring the diasporian the African American uh, in, the, in the diaspora to to, uh, to integrate, integrate and sort of uh, have an exchange with the Africans on, on the continent in terms of knowledge exchange school transfer uh, leadership training entrepreneurship um, school development and we have also canvassed other uh, universities and okay. <clears throat> programs that I mean relationship there that can also uh, bring their resources to join what we are doing here to expand it mm -hmm. so we are very grateful that we are here and here we are with uh, Yale which also has also a unique yeah. uh, channel of connection uh, that conforms to our uh, five pillars uh, the five pillars of our operation, the, scholar, uh, the academy, the scholars, the um, pilgrimage, the design, 
um, and the, uh, the people mentioned the design and the, and the summit. The summit being inter intergenerational uh, gathering of young and, and old uh, coming together to share ideas and to have a transfer of knowledge and also absorption of all knowledge, hence going into our uh, symbol or logo, the Sankofa, so that the young can go back to the to the past and learn what we actually so left over. Yeah. So that's a Sankofa. And the Ubuntu is what my, my wife is saying, that we all feel good about one person coming from a community, having a successful or rewarding um, a gift or uh, yeah. award mm -hmm. that the whole community mm -hmm. enjoys. Yeah. And so that is how we are. Right. It, accomplishment is not individual, it is, it's communal. It's a communal, yes. Okay. Yeah. And awesome. uh, we are community people. Yeah. Um, Africans are literally community people. Right. When the chief says, make this kente, it doesn't belong to the weaver that has made it. It belongs to the community because mm -hmm. the chief represents the community. Right. So we have a hard time uh, thinking of things as African people as individuals, individuals because we don't realize that and when we do oh it's mine I can't share it that kind of thing now digitalization and uh, social media says we've got to share we've got to tell the story we've got to go out there and let the world know and understand us so we don't have time for individual anymore. We must talk about who we are as a people collectively. collectively. Interesting. So I'll, I'll pick some few comments from our viewers who are watching us live on Facebook. I have uh, both a tooth, uh, tooth joke. Wow, I love that <laughs> name. This is watching from Sudan. And okay. we have a um, blessing, Jessica uh, Bonsi, who is uh, one of our correspondents from Nigeria. She's also watching. We have Dao Dajalo all the way from the Gambia. They have joined us in the live feed. We have Benjamin Koble. They are watching from Togo. And he said they are enjoying the discussions of day two. We have um, Davis Musu from uh, Liberia. He said we are following. I uh, have a name here. It's written in Arabic. Pardon me for not knowing how to mention your name. You are watching from Morocco. We have Foley Dussel. You are also watching from Togo. And we have Timmy Miga. You are also watching from somewhere in Africa. Drop your comments and questions for any of our panelists as we run up a day two and the final program in our phase one of the Yali Attend celebrations on Yali TV. It's, it's such an interesting experience um, talking on behalf of my team, uh, in the past uh, few weeks, post uh, COVID-19 restrictions and lockdowns, mm -hmm. we've had the opportunity to work with our colleagues. Uh, we had the opportunity to have live stream feeds from all over the continent where people are sharing stories on what they're doing uh, by building technology platforms for education. Some were giving donations in their communities from all over the continent. Young people coming up with solutions. But the, 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 what we realized was, if we did not have Yali TV, who was going to report all these interventions? So we came to the realization that it's so important that in this time that we want to tell our stories, we need to also build our own platforms. Mm -hmm. But without partnership, those realities will never come to pass because we had the part partners like the US Embassy, mm -hmm. we had the Department of State, the Yali, uh, special coordinators coming to support us and getting us the right people we needed to speak, the right resource people. Then we had uh, um, domestic organizations and individuals, consultants like uh, Madam Sherry and then organizations like yourself playing one role or the other to ensure that this happens. So when we talk about the relevance of media and digital media telling the African story, partnership is so relevant yes. in achieving this goal. And that's why we're having this discussion. Going forward, for instance, in the discussion we had yesterday and today, it's obvious that capacity building, uh, resources, and technical inputs are very critical 
to ensure that we build the right platforms and the right foundation to have strong institutions that can tell the African story as a media entity. So I'll come to you, Mama, uh, Mama Lou. Let me call you Mama Lou. I'm very comfortable. <laughs> um, you have been an engineer for the mobilization of information and resources as well as technical people. How relevant is partnership in grooming young Africans to become the custodians of telling the African story? Well, um, one of the things, Selassie, so I'm going to spend some time with you with uh, is showing you some of the other young people that have amazing networks mm. and you building with them as well. Yali TV, because you've decided to take this space, you can actually show what all these other young people are doing right. in their corners right. and places and spaces you can actually now acknowledge that young people are doing something. We have a tendency to think that everybody is just, you know, uh, tweeting and Instagramming and, uh, you know, Facebooking and they're just talking nonsense. You people are not talking nonsense. You are building platforms. You are building networks. And the partnership that you're going to see from me is to connect you to some of these amazing platforms and networks that you might not know about. Mm. These young people that need to, we need to shine the light. Right. This is what they're doing in that corner. Mm -hmm. this, and some of them are not young, young, young. Yeah. Some of them are actually older. Experienced young Ooh, people. <laughs> but honey, they are flowing. Okay. You know, we have uh, women like uh, uh, Cecilia uh, Aneka Foundation. This woman pulls 2,000 young people together in the Volta region for camp. And I mean, for the month? Oh, and she invites me and I'm like, can we do that next year? <laughs> because just the thought of it with all these people and she's helping young women who, you know, early pregnancy, right. helping uh, young, young people who really are into, you know, they, they've been doing drugs, okay. doing uh, other uh, things that, because education is not where it should be, and, and, and their life is, their economics is not where it could be. So these are the types of things, the types of stories. I like Woody Maya, Ghana, Ghana baby. Mm. You gotta get with him. Because, yes, he's out there viral on YouTube, okay. but he should be viral on Yali. So get him here. Tell him to share stories here at the network, okay? So that people zoom in to Yali and see that content here, not just on YouTube. YouTube is starting to now, you know, do some things take some information down, people can't say this, people can't do this. We're noticing some things. So this is the time we gotta build our own. Cause we gotta say, uh-uh, uh, you can't kind of manipulate what we're thinking. You can't manipulate or or try to give us what you think we, we should have. Our ah, we want our uh, uncensored, you know, if, if the only thing I say is we shouldn't be violent, okay? But, you know, Malcolm X, let's tell the story. You know, by any means necessary, what are the means? What, what, what becomes necessary, okay? So we have to express ourselves. History is his story. We've got to tell our story. And we have a story. And we have a tendency not to tell our story because we, we, we want to copy. Uh, I mean, one of my pet peeves, young men with their pants down the backside. <laughs> no. Your content has got to be your own original something. We must not lose our identity. You must not lose your identity. Okay? 
just because you see something done someplace else, understand what that is really before you do it. Okay, we have Kumasi kids. What is that? Comerica? America. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't mind the fusion, but. To what end? To, what are we doing here? Okay, fusion has got to serve a purpose. To what end are we fusing? So what is the content really going to accomplish? What is the communication really going to accomplish? We've got to look at that and we've got to be really uh, deliberate. Yes, very intentional. Very intentional. Very deliberate as to what we are communicating and how we communicate. There's something I love about the United States of America. I remember in the in the 70s into the 80s and then the 90s, the, the film industry uh, intentionally communicated the United States as a superhero nation. You watch a movie, there's a war between this country and this country, and America comes to save the day. The American Army, the US Marine Corps, then we have the superheroes, and you realize the world war is always happening in America. Then America says that it sort of planted the sensationalism of America mm -hmm. and making America the superpower that saves the whole world in every sector. I agree with you on that aspect that we must also be intentional mm -hmm. to push content that makes the African a champion of the world. Yes. And I believe we are champions because when it comes to um, the economics of the world, Africa for that matter, provides a lot everything. of resources, everything. if not everything, almost everything, from food to even natural resources, and uh, um, the, um, the and mineral people. resources, and, and, and the Starting human capital. Uh, we're, still, to... we're still providing human capital. Exactly. Okay. So we have to be very intentional. I agree with you, and I believe that all those who are watching us, majority of those who are watching us, believe that we must be intentional in telling our story and imposing the identity of the African also as a champion to the rest of the world. So I'd love to find out from, from you, uh, Reverend. Um, the diaspora has a key role to play when we speak about human capital. We have Africans who are media moguls. We have Africans who are, are into production, top level, world class production. How do we build a bridge? Because we're talking about partnership. How do we build a bridge, especially with an organization like Pillar? What role can we play going forward, knowing that we have a platform like Yale, we have a platform like Yale TV, we have Payla. How do we pull in this huge human capital to exchange the information they've gathered over the years that has been passed on from generation to generation up onto this generation to affect the young African to ensure that we build the platforms that tell the African story? Thank you. I really love the, the notion of storytelling. Uh, I consider myself to be a narrative theologian, which means actually that you listen uh, to people's stories and connect with them there. If you notice, Jesus really never preached to people. That's the mode of actually uh, that's used in mission and colonization and imperialization, where you have a preacher standing up and speaking to a mass of people with no interaction. Jesus actually, every time someone came to him, he would say, well, who do you think that I am? Well, who's your neighbor? He would ask them questions to see where their worldview was, and then he would jump in at that point. And so we don't ask enough questions, and we don't listen to people. And so I think, uh, as a narrative theologian, that we listen and uplift the voice of those who've been marginalized. If you notice, Jesus listened to people that most people didn't talk to, uh, particularly mm -hmm. women. And so that was his focus. And somehow it's been transformed into another methodology. But Jesus was on the ground uh, being social. And he was condemned for being social. Uh, and so I have a story about storytelling. Uh, when I was a student at Harvard, I was a tutor in the Lowell House. We have a house system in Harvard. They have a similar one at Oxford. And Mark Zuckerberg was a student there at the time. So every semester, we had an actual Facebook which I have since displaced, but I'm sure it's probably very valuable. But it was an actual hard copy book. And before uh, the semester started, they would send us out a prompt. 
and say, what do you think about this? What do you have to say? What are you thinking about? So it was like a think tank. And so the professors as well would also, and we would publish it annually. Uh, so everyone came prepared to have the best thoughts. Uh, and after graduating from Harvard, I worked for Harvard. And one of the things about admission, uh, you can have a 4.0, but if you don't have a vision to touch the world, you're not going to Harvard. <laughs> so everyone has to have an idea. So I recall at the time, uh, well, Mark Zuckerberg ended up getting kicked out because of this, but uh, they asked us a question. They said, can we take your thoughts and share them with... Uh, Stanford, Princeton, Yale, and Cornell. That was what originally what how Facebook became a platform. And so we all had to give permission to share our thoughts because it was it was our, you know, personal, personal. information. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then somehow between the time that we gave that um, permission, it became something else. But I remember the conversation around Facebook was we have to be intentional about influence. And so one of the things why people like Harvard, I mean, of course it's a good school, but one of the things about it is that there's an understanding of systems that's okay. taught. So I've also graduated from Princeton following Harvard, and they have a different model. But one of the things that I love about Harvard is they say to you, you have to influence thought. They don't teach you to get a job anywhere. They teach you how do you influence. So if you look at the world leaders and things, a lot of them do come from Harvard. So they teach you how do you influence the way people think. And once you do that, you have economy to back you up. So, change, so this is a system of thinking, storytelling. And so the other thing we have to remember is that algorithms are beyond that story. They are watching what you say. And so there's money attached to the story. So that's one of the things that Mark Zuckerberg did. There are algorithms inside, built into that platform. In fact, just to add up to what you said, very important. you realize that when you make a search, everything the next time, is everything that comes, every ad is just yes. what you just said. And so that's the thing told, we need to think about yeah, for our economy. I was told something, yes. Ref, that very even um, with conversations, by the time you finish making a yes, call that, is. oh, um, how can I get um, uh, yes, a wire, they uh, how they call it, a Bluetooth speaker, yeah. the next advert you are seeing pop up it's on Facebook Bluetooth, is Bluetooth. It's Bluetooth speaker. And it's works, it works here. And so having seen that actual, you know, being sat down in a meeting and saying, this is what we're going to do, people don't realize that people actually sit down and do that. Mm -hmm. I've been a part of lots of meetings where they say, no, this is what Harvard's going to do. We're going to influence them to change this system. And it's amazing. And for, for particularly for people of color. So I feel like I've been blessed to be in those meetings. Okay. For people of color, we are the influenced. And so we have to begin to understand that because we are the consumers of the world. Absolutely. And so they target how are we going to make these black people think about whatever. And not necessarily black people, but people of color, people that are oppressed. And so what then, there is another system that is at work. There's theories about reauthoring because Harvard and these think, think tanks of the world, they say, okay, we're going to do here. And then Yale will say, okay, I literally I've been in these meetings because okay. I work for them. Okay, Yale, what are you going to do to influence the shift in culture? And so the whole social media was actually very well thought out. Right. And you have people on there playing and putting all their information. That's why there's platforms and they're tied to economy. You have this many Africans on social media. They have to be able to change. So what I've done, yeah. because I'm aware of that, when I go on my phone, because Siri is also involved, mm -hmm. and so is Cortella. They, they're involved. You have to be aware of that. Uh, and so it's important for us to stay in the world systems and how we are very critical to the world system when we're unaware of it. So I say, you know what? I, I told my husband, I, I, sh I like shopping. And so I say, listen, <laughs> I stay on my phone because I'm not from Ghana. You know, I really need a Clinique product. I'll say that. And then when I do my search, all the places will come up. And I'll, I say, well, 
I, this is the product I'm looking for, the inventory. They will show me the inventory. I've been to Ernest Chemist, for example, and I said to them, I'm here to pick up this particular product. They said, well, we don't have that. I said, oh, yes, you do. They said, we don't have that. I said, well, I actually just looked at your back inventory. You do have it. I went there, and it was there. Wow. So we have to understand how we Did can influence <laughs> and we can do that here in Ghana. I do it all the time at the stores. And my husband's always like, I'm like, oh, I know. And they'll say, well, we don't have that. I said, oh, yes, you do have it. And it's been proven true all the time. Whoa. And so, and the pricing of how they do things. So I'll say to them, well, you can't charge me this because in East Legon, it's, you know, 15 more dollars. So, so I'm really into that because I want to see how the power of that social media. So let's reauthor. That's the other thing. And then I'm going to stop. Reauthoring is about, so there's an authorization of our stories from colonization, from slavery. We need to then reauthor myths. And so when we have to be intentional about everything, like Mama Lou was saying, that we put out and create a new story. So everything that we do, talking on the phone, unfortunately, even on WhatsApp, all of that stuff is in an algorithm. And so one of my students, actually, who I hope to get on Yali TV one day, co-founded uh, Data for Black Lives. So she watches all the algorithms. Even algorithms are used in who they imprison and how many sentences they give people and how much they spend. So all of that, how much money should they put in the educational system for this child? And so she tracks the data along with another one of my students and they actually got a grant from Google. But we have to connect uh, this information. And so I've been so blessed to be, you know, I've just been like the fly on the wall. And I'm like, okay, uh, people need to know there's systems at work and how do we, how do we make that system work for us? Excellent. I, I, I'm, I'm almost, I'm segueing. I'm segueing. Yeah, yeah. I'm, segueing. I'm, I'm so happy because you see, yeah, Mama Luke. If I turn off my GPS, nobody should know where I've gone. The next thing that Google asks me is how did I like Blue Crest College? Yes. Mind you, my GPS is off. How do they know that I visited this place? I think my GPS is off. Obviously, something's on. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Okay. These are things that you must be aware of I mean, and you IP, must understand. The IP is always active. My, you my must IP be aware of and home. you must understand. You must be aware of and you must understand. They know exactly where you are at all times of the day. So, how do you flip <coughs> the script? How do you flip the script? What do we need to do intentionally mm. to not be so victimized no, I mean we, we, I, we, I, we I, need I, to be at a position of oh. also producing and also getting the benefits of it exactly so here I am you know I did a search and I don't know that you know what you just said is amazing algorithm is there the next thing I know Every ad that comes up has to do with what I just searched. Mm -hmm. You can't even search. If you come up with an idea for a company, don't search if yeah. you got they got the web. Exactly. Don't do it. It's gone. it's gone. Don't do it. It's gone. They're waiting for you to search the name. And once you do that, the domain, somebody, is, gone. The domain is gone. So if you're going to keep a secret, Keep it long enough so as well as you can go and register it and then start doing what you need to do. Okay? That's intentional. We need to learn about the system at hand. You cannot just be Facebooking and sending chat and Snapchat and Instagramming and you cannot be just doing this and not understand the, system. the systems in place. Uh, um, Doc, I mean, I, I'm still on the point of there was a time in when we were growing up, I'll talk about myself uh, on behalf of the youth uh, 
the youth populace of Africa. There was a time where there was so much difference between the African, let me use the word black, even though I believe always is in Africa. <laughs> the black man we see in America on TV was so different from us. Why? Because of language, the way they spoke, the way they dressed. But now that reality is closing up. Yeah. We had, we just had a year of return. That reality is close enough. So I know that, okay, Will Smith is just like me, but he's in America. Right. So there's a lot we can do together economically. Right. Not just for the fun of it, but economically. And I also know that, okay, uh, um, Maurice Chestnut uh, wants to come to Ghana. He wants to come here and chill in maybe the waterfalls. He wants to go to an African waterfalls. Mm -hmm. He wants to go deep down to the countryside and feel African. So I'm still on this point. What can we do to bridge this gap consciously so that knowing very well, someone asked me yesterday, why are you so um, conscious about communication? Communication communication because it is what will tell the story for us to know where we are going, where we are coming from, and what we need to do. So what can we do uh, with these partnerships that we are building up to this, this bring in this human resource that has been really prepared Look, when when Doc, uh, when the Reverend was speaking, I was happy in my heart because I knew that that is the kind of information we need to be discussing right now yeah. Yeah. for us to be able to build our our, our systems. Yeah. We need to understand how systems work to build our systems. Yeah. So, what can we do in regards to partnership in bringing this human resource from the diaspora to Africa? That is a very that is a very interesting space. and important link, the missing link that we are all. Uh, aspiring to achieve or to bring to light, to bring that relationship together. The Diasporian Black Forest, for instance, uh, uh, there's a lot of, uh, uh, what do you call it, hurt, a lot of uh, emotional, a lot of physical, a lot of uh, in intellectual um, uh, deprivation. Even when you create it, they take it away from you. Uh, when you are able to excel somewhere, they want to make sure you don't even exist and that somebody owns it. So we've lived, lived in, the, in the culture where where the black person or African-American, no uh, you have no, you, before you excel to become what you want to be or who you are, you have to work three, four times more than what a, a white person exactly. would do exactly. to, be, to, be, to be noticed. So, but regardless of that, the, the black Americans or the Africans who are in the United States or in the diaspora are determined to excel regardless. Mm. And there's, ch there's a lot of uh, uh, chances we take. We take risk to make ourselves known. And it, we don't get, they don't get scared. For instance, you will see uh, a black person leading a whole big industry or, for instance, a hospital. Most of the U.S. hospitals are headed by Ghanaian doctors, yeah. as managing directors. And you wouldn't doctors. even know that. And you wouldn't know. <laughs> and there's yeah. so much progress. Wow. And guess go. what? When they are here, they become we are, hidden we are not recognized. Yeah. They are not recognized when they are in their own country. Wow. Why? Because we feel that when we go outside our comfort zone to outside countries, to different territories, that's where we our our we have a glory. We can excel and make money and all that. But we forget the fact that if you leave your community that has been built with the culture, social metrics, all those mixtures that brought you up, if you leave it and go somewhere else, you're going to start from the bottom. Unless you, you go there and you're lucky and somebody lifts you up and, and bring you to, to, to a, a highest point in your life. But, most of the people who are doing well in, 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 in the United yes. States or in the diaspora, they work very hard. So why don't we turn around and look inside ourselves, educating our children. This is why, Taylor, it's so uh, uh, pious and pushing to look inside our territory, look inside our communities, look inside our homes, look inside our, our, our small resources that we have. What can we create? What kind of seed can we put in here that can produce fruit that we don't have to run 
to somewhere else to look for. Uh, All the time. You know, so from to answering the question that you asked, we need to educate. And, and education and knowledge acquisition is important to the, the, uh, the continent Africans who are here to know that, hey, you don't have to go to United States to, 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 to be creative or to be innovative or to, to create your, uh, 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 create a new thing or, or a dream. Yeah, you can dream your dream right here by, by what we need to do, the responsibility of the continent, the government and the society that we, we have to support the youth. We have to create the avenue for them, bring the platform that allows them to grow, innovate, inspire them to, to, to dream big dreams. And so here, because of the colonization and, and lack of our own understanding of our history, okay. it, we have been surprised. It's been, it's been like a scar, emotional, uh, spiritual uh, scar that we, we, we are living with. The colonization is costing us not even to approve ourselves or to value ourselves. We always think something, something, somebody, something from outside is better than me or better than us. So it is, it is up to us to integrate the good information, the good training that we have. Believe it or not, Ghana has a very good education. When we go out, when I left my country uh, uh, from University of Science and Technology, Kumasi, and and I went out there and, and I was grabbing like degrees so. like this. It's like easy for us to move through this mm -hmm. system. But if somebody comes from the United States and have a degree, you think, oh, this is a very tough number one degree. But we, we made it here. And you go there, it's like you are three times up you know, in doing good things there. So if we bring all what we have to do for, the, for you, for right now, that's why we have this, our pillars. It started from acad uh, the academy, the uh, uh, the summit, the scholars, and all. That. It's all centered around education, culture, social changes, and 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 uh, empowerment of our young people to to be creative and innovative within here. Mm. Instead of thinking going you know, back so there is going to be yeah, no, it's not. It, it's the here. grass is greener yeah. here. It's greener under, here. We have under your feet. Yeah, the introduction yeah. you gave as a resource place, the whole world depends on Africa yes. to, to grow. But I do think that what has historically uh, cost Africa is the robbing of human resources. And so I think that getting those human resources and connecting with them is actually going to be the key. Because I don't think they're going to be able to do it alone. Because there's information that's in the diaspora that's needed here. Very, very critical. And so we so have, but there's a lot of misinformation of stories. Mm -hmm. uh, African Americans sometimes have misinformation about Africans. Mm -hmm. However, I do find that Africans don't know much about people in the diaspora. Very and they true. don't care to know, but they need to know. And so I think that's where, uh, for me, I have a passion about educating Africans about. Uh, the diaspora. So, for example, if you take Kwame Nkrumah, the independence of Ghana would not have happened had he not gone to Lincoln University, was a historically black was inspired house. By, uh, Martin Luther uh, King, King would Reverend not have occurred. And so, that should be the story that what needed to I happen in Africa is blueprint. not going to happen. That is a major blueprint yes. for uh, the, the real African emancipation. Because exactly. okay, so, so, then ask yourself the question, why has that story not been told? Because I think Africans really do not care to know. Not Why do they not know. They don't, don't care we to know. have a movie <laughs> to tell the whole story? That tells about that. That, story. that was the that was the, the power connection. When he, Bam. when he met MLK, Bam. He inspired him. He said, "No, okay. I'm coming back home. I'm coming to what, liberate what, my people." What 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 went down? And what I'll went tell you down? What happened? That. Yes. Okay, now they make a lot of movies in Hollywood, in Bollywood, in Nollywood about junk. Doesn't, about tell junk. About <laughs> doesn't tell anything about the lightning, the, connecting. the yeah. storm, the yeah. connectings. I have yet to hear and see a story about Yasantua. 
Everybody's calling me Yaa Santua. I'm like, really? <laughs> Where's that story? Yeah. What was she doing? Well, that's why we need okay. African Americans in and, the diaspora and, 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 and that Hollywood. That is the main point. This is and where I have we friends. are right Will now. Will Smith is one of them. Mm. We can reach out to him. Who are? But I think some. That's why we have this organization. And that's why we want to reconcile <laughs> people. It's so uh, and so it's critical for yeah. both of us. And the reason mm -hmm. why the whole Pan African movement started, the reason why Martin Luther King and Kwame Nkrumah got together was because if you think about the Israelites, think about Israel. Mm. They created Israel after World War II. Yes, so that did. when things went down again, they had a place to go. Mm -hmm. That's just the that's just the summary, you know, the on the street summary of that whole yeah. thing. And that was actually the intention. Okay, so we're about to start a civil rights movement. We might get kicked out of here. Where are we going to go if this thing doesn't work out? And so integration was one part of that, but also expansion into the Pan-African movement was part of the civil rights movement that somehow got cut off, probably because of misinformation. Mm -hmm. And so I hear lots of stories that people are just unaware, you know, of the history that is so critical we need to keep you know moving that forward this country is independent because of a pan-african movement let's continue that and so i think it's uh, critical that we understand the histories and the importance of our reconciliation which is critical Very and it's critical. not a political thing that's you right. know we we politicize everything this is more exactly. economic than political this is it, it is definitely it's almost, it's not, I don't know if I can call it even economic at this point. When you say you want to make that connection, that kind of connection, that is DNA cultural connection. And that's, that's in the bone. Of that's the soul. The so, that's it. Yeah. That's a soul tie. Mm -hmm. You've got yeah. to find your soul ties. What's my soul tie with you? What do we have in the Come. DNA that speaks? I would like to say one more thing. Uh, you know, they talk about the year of return and the healing that happens, but the healing that happens from people that were decimated of 12.5 million of their people, obviously that hurt and crippled, you know, taking the strongest people and the most injured, you know, taking all those people out. Did, wouldn't that have hurt if somebody came and took your kid? So you're hurting as well. And so it's not just about us being restored. That's why restoration is one of our platforms. You need to be restored because you may not even know what you're missing. Exactly. And so I find that, you know, a lot of us like, oh, the African... No, you need to return as well. Yeah. And you need to understand oh, yeah. what was taken away from oh, you yeah. that you need. And so we both need each other. It's not just, you know, one way. Oh, yeah. This is the thing where we have to sit down and you know, I don't, I, and I, I'm with Mama Lou on this, sometimes we talk about economy because we don't want to become capitalist again. We don't want to mimic the Western system. Not no, because that. That, that prioritizes money over people. Good. But we want to Which lift what up the, the enslaved soul. Yeah. Yes. thing was about. Yeah. Yes. Prioritizing the money over aspect people. of the people so, yes. over the people yeah. who were enslaved. And I will tell you that if you want to really see a year of return, you know, that was about making economic partnerships. But people, black lives matter. Why do they say that? They're not saying black money matters. People want to buy black. But the life that's attached to the soul of our people exactly. have to be healed. And if we want, the economy will come secondarily. When the but we have restored. to be restored yeah. as a people. Yeah. You've been robbed from, we've been stolen, we've got to get that clear. And then yeah. I believe it's, it has to be a spiritual movement. Of course, I'm going to say that, but I do believe so <laughs> because I don't think it's an economic movement. You can't just skip over the relationship. You can't skip over. If, if you stole something from me and then I said, can you buy something? From? No, I got to give you that back. Okay. And so before we can do business together, we have to heal our souls. And so that's why I believe restoration and reconciliation is the key to any, and then the ec economy will come, because we'll be friends, but you have to have the relationship. Yeah. And the addition, in addition to that, there's also another group of humanity 
that do not see the progress of the black person. So whatever movement you make to excel or go to one from one step to another, there's a team who's looking at suppressing you so you don't get to your destination. I'll take whatever you're using to get there, I'll take it away. Mm. I'll take your rights, I'll take your health, I won't give you health care, I won't give you this. But these are the things that they're using to break down of our the pillars. Common enemies. Pillars, common pillars. Common enemies. And this is what causes the racism. Because they think that if you, you become a better person and they cannot become who you are, you you be better than them and you don't want it to get to that level so no matter how the black black population or black race moves steps forward there's also another group that is going to take you down from interesting so you take three steps forward and then you walk they walk yourself back so there's a, always a cycle of a revolution of a revolution and you can see from uh, from jim crow time to all those times that that people went through from slavery to trying to mm -hmm. emancipate, trying to release ourselves. I mean, I'm, I'm a Ghanaian, but I feel, because I've been there for so long, I can feel, I can smell what has gone on. Good. Though I didn't see them. I mean, hence, my wife is a very important part of me because anytime I reminisce what I have seen when I've been there and, and been uh, trusting myself and being into certain areas where my color prevents me from being the head of a, uh, a company or uh, and a, job I mean, or the same anything. person that I am training. I earn, uh, he earns uh, one third more than I do, and I'm training him to be somebody that I, <laughs> I know more than, mm. you know. And this, these are things that really uh, demoralize uh, some of our black folks because when you see that there's no end, you think everything is blocked, you are just like, you hit the wall. But it's somebody, and it's planned. It's planned in our legislation. It's planned in our politics. It's planned in our hospital, health insurance. It's planned in our salaries. Everything is set so that you don't go beyond certain level. This is something that we have to reverse it in our community. And, 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 and the and media is that The too. media is where the you do that, that education. Yes. The media is that too. Okay. Because now, yes, many people cannot fit into the classroom, but we have <coughs> you, you, system. You got yeah. your phone. <coughs> you got your phone. Yeah. Right. I always tell people, GTS, Google that stuff. Yeah. Don't let me sit there and tell you anything. Yeah. I'll be like, you have Google? You got a smartphone? <laughs> Google that. Yeah. Use your brain to get to where you need to go to empower yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that empowerment gives you the confidence mm -hmm. to move on to the next level. Yeah. Right. So, here we are. We're talking about data. We're talking about content. Right. There's no shortage of content. Mm -hmm. But there is also this other content called fake news. Mm -hmm. Ooh we we can't go there. Everything you do must have integrity as the foundation. It must be real, it must be original, it must be truth. Right. Now you got people saying there's this truth, there's that Al truth. Alternative truth. There's alternative truth. Yeah. There's all kind of truth. Yeah. Inside you know the truth because the truth sets you free. And if you are sitting there and your truth is not setting you free, if you're sitting there and your truth is demoralizing somebody else, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. hello black people, okay? Yes, I'm a Christian. But there are some people that are not Christian. Don't spend time talking to me about my problem being a Christian. Find your own truth within yourself. And I got mine. Let's work together with what we have together. Mm. So, my co-founder... I have I have something coming. I tell you, I don't want to say anything. I can't believe I'm on air. <laughs> it's coming. 
And when it gets to you, you you heard it here first. I tell you, something you is here. coming. You heard okay. it here first. You heard it here first. You know, Yali TV. You, you know, heard it here first. Interestingly, Mama Lou. <clears throat> and we're going to tell there's, your story. There's so much, there's so much that's right in this conversation that is so necessary that people have missed. And that is why we believe that grooming the next, um, the next generation of communicators, journalists, and media practitioners is very critical to getting us to where we need to get to. Mm -hmm. The medium now, that bridge is media. Yeah. And thank God for technology. So as part of our contribution to ensuring that that missing link between the rich human resource or human capital in the diaspora and the yearning uh, root in Africa, we are bringing together, we're putting together a strong partnership these are some of the partners, these are some of the representatives or the partners in the studio now to establish what we call the Young Africa Media Fellowship, where we'll have campaigns in the media and communication as well as PR space. And even the movie industry grooming our content developers here in Africa. And this is going to be launched in 2021. We're just giving you a full information. The partnerships are going to be working between now and the end of the, the year 2020 to understand how we want to uh, carry this carry out this program. And the good news is that Blue Crest University College has agreed to be the academic partner to this fellowship. And we're looking forward to mm -hmm. getting other institutions in the diaspora, at least if not one, many, that could also partner in this to make the uh, the foundation of this capacity building program solid, that it carries the DNA of the identity of the Africa. At the same time, it communicates the ethics and the standards of Absolutely. the industry. Absolutely. So, um, I mean, this conversation is going to go on. You're going to have these speakers come on again and again. We have some programs that we'll share with you before we close. Because my, my producer just admitted that our time is almost up. <laughs> so what we're going to do is um, we're going to have comments from our uh, panelists here on some of the things they are going to be doing uh, in the coming uh, months, weeks, or even years with regards to developing leadership on the continent, uh, supporting um, the media space to become a relevant tool of building a bridge between the diaspora and the continent. So, uh, Mamalu, Parting comments on what um, your entity as a uh, as a, a consultancy is going to do going forward, which I know you've already been telling me behind the scenes. We want to hear it. The whole of Africa wants to hear what are we going to be doing well, to push yeah. this medium that we have now recognized is the solution to ensure that Africa recovers and we we do sankofa recover recovers and rebuilds. Yes, yeah. recovers, rebuilds. Yeah. 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 Okay, so you're on a platform right. called SFX. Yes. Okay? Yes. SFX Global Africa. It's a chat group. And I started this chat group maybe about two years ago or so. I joined just last and, year. Yeah. And uh, on that chat group, you see models, actors, producers, producers writers, directors dancers, musicians, every creative person is sitting up in there. Yeah, even industry uh, Industry captains. heads. Yeah. Industry heads and captains, they're there. Investors are there. Mm. Okay? Investors are there. And folks, sometimes you all start talking and you don't realize, you know, because you're not intentional, that somebody's looking at you and looking at how you present yourself. So I let you all sit up in there, okay? Chit-chat. Chit-chat. Okay, I've given you the space to do your chit-chat. But when you start getting funky and funny, I'm like, nah, I gotta give some <laughs> little, you know, guidelines. we need guidelines. We need to move to where we're collaborating on a, a higher level. Right. We can't just be gossiping. This is mm -hmm. not, you know... Mm -hmm. We can't be doing stupid stuff. 
because we've been doing stupid stuff for a very long time <laughs> and white folk, black folk, everybody folk, we need to get to understanding ourselves and understanding what ties that we have that do bind us. I'm not the one that says white people can't help black people. In fact, there are a lot of white people who want to do it. here. Can't do it. Can't do it. You know, some folk come over from U.S. Oh, I'm running away from, you know. We're here as a global village. And no matter what hurt we had or we had in the past, leave it behind and press forward to the high calling. Amen. Okay? There is a higher calling. And that higher calling might include somebody as a destiny helper that happens to be of another race. And if you're sitting up there, oh, ma, I hate, I can't. Mm -mm. You've missed your destiny helper. And God is, God is something else. He will put somebody that you... That is ready. Oh, that you can't, oh, as your destiny helper. Just so you learn something about what you need to move forward with. So I can't say, because, you know, my background is not pure African. I got Irish up in here. I can tell because when I get mad, it gets Irish wild. <laughs> <laughs> it gets wild. <clears throat> you know, I can't sit here and talk about my ancestors because some of them ancestors don't like the other ancestors. And they up in my body can I try to carry on. Oh, no. God Almighty. <laughs> That's who I'm worshiping. And that's Mama, my creator. You know, you know something I really and he love, knows about me. I really love about the platform that you've created, um, the SFS uh, Global. Mm -hmm. On that very platform, you get to see the latest creatives, yes. the latest content, yes. um, what the, the country, and probably is, is a depiction of the continent, what the continent is thinking about so that you know what to produce. Yes. And I think this is one of the key ingredients that um, when we roll out this fellowship we we'll need um, your inputs on to ensure that we are able to funnel this the expectation because we're talking about developing content for whom for what purpose to reach whom so those critical Good. points come from Good. the industry captains Good. and also someone uh, hinted me oh could we get to know about the legalities and the ethics of this space of media and so so very critically, this platform that you have is going to play a very key role when we roll out this program. And that's that that was intentional. <laughs> very intentional. <laughs> yeah. Rev, yeah. what what contributions are we going to see in the coming year, twenty twenty one, when it comes to us intentionally grooming and developing our human resource to tell our story in twenty twenty one? Well, one thing I like to say is that I'm thankful uh, that. Uh, to live through the pandemic and uh, I'm not thankful that it's hurt people but the scripture says that we should be thankful in not for everything but in it and so in I'm not thankful for that pandemic but I'm thankful in it because I think it allowed people to sit down and sort of reframe uh, as you know because I'm really into re reframing uh, reauthoring and getting in a revisioning uh, a lot of people talked about, you know, having 2020 vision, but you cannot have 2020 vision without some sort of a correction. So, so I think a lot of uh, things were deconstructed for us, things that we thought we were seeing. Okay. So we had to a look at things. Yes, a reset. And so uh, we had to, you know, uh, sort of reboot and recalculate. I know I had to recalculate because I was going in one direction, you know, recalculating. And so I think um, for us, we are um, being open to that. And part of that recalculation and revisioning um, of our time and looking at Kairos moments as opposed to chronological time. And I believe this is a Kairos moment. Uh, and so we are looking to have a, a Kwanzaa marketplace in partnership with uh, Yali and perhaps Mama Lou, uh, Made in Africa, 
uh, and we're going to have a Kwanzaa program because I find out many Africans know nothing about Kwanzaa. And it is a uh, holiday specifically for Africans in the diaspora. Right. And so we plan on having that on December the 29th, okay. showcasing um, our artists here and encouraging those in the diaspora to buy black. Uh, we're having it on Ujama, which is the fourth day of Kwanzaa, which lifts up yes. cooperative economics. Yes. And so uh, I think that's also key to our health and healing cooperative economics and so that will be on December the 29th uh, yes I think that's all that I have to say about okay. that okay yeah um, um, uh, Dr. I mean you, we had some conversations behind the scene and we know that you guys want to do so much in Africa we want to do so much with leadership and thank God we have Yali so just a sneak peek. What are some of the things you should expect from Pela, uh, between Pela and Riale in 2021? Oh, great. Um, we, we, our, our partnership is gonna, it's going to bring in um, a lot of ideas and a lot of innovations. One of them will be how to structure Riale Pela relationship with others. It's not just our partnership alone. Just Riale and all the other ones that are coming in. And then second part is, how do we create uh, a legal surveillance that will screen our production, our creation, our projection, production of uh, information, mm -hmm. the dissemination of information outside? Yeah. Right. How yeah. do we put the legal aspect, the, the policies, like the, the policies yes, policies and procedures in place and to restrict uh, falsehoods, false um, information, and, and to, to take all this fake news. It's been so, uh, uh, the reception of fake, fake news is competing with truth. But truth is only one. And we can only have one truth, and that is what I think Yale and all the partnerships are gonna build on. It's gonna be our foundation, our structure, and everything. And by having 49, maybe more oh, African, African countries joining it, we have to make sure that that policy exists through all our documentation, reporting, um, relationships. relationships that we develop outside the network so that it becomes a, a, a station or uh, a, a resource that people can come to. And then the fourth part of it is how to create all that information, have the legislation the uh, education and all the uh, other marketing tools in place so that we can then attract investments. Other investors from diaspora to come in and join and help us grow. So this is what Pela is thinking to revolutionize what you have already created, wonderful platform, but we're gonna make it better by putting in place certain specific uh, focal um, uh, instruments that will guide us so that we don't mix our uh, information delivery with other things that is going to make us fail or make, reduce the truthness of what we are reporting. Yeah. So when somebody is reporting from Kenya, from South Africa, from, it is the truth that is coming out and the world will depend on us one day. One day, the whole world will turn to Yali Television Network and create, um, I mean, help us to develop further uh, what we have, we have just done. This is just a primary uh, crawling state, but yes. there's going to be time that we're going to walk, run, and start jumping. So mm -hmm. this is the future of what I see. Well, I do think we should happen. note the practical aspect mm -hmm. of the Leadership Academy. We plan on having that in 2021 uh, for Yali Fellows, where we uh, do some work on our worldview and understanding cooperative economics, Ubuntu and that type of thing, and also a pilgrimage, which we hope to uh, enact once the pandemic has lessened. The restrictions are yes, uh, where we invite uh, diaspora, particularly young students uh, between the ages of 18 and 35, awesome. uh, to come here and have a sort of a meeting in a think tank with African young people here. And then also we have 
uh, summit that we hope to, awesome. which I think is the critical piece. And that's where the Sankofa comes in, where we bring in people like Mama Lou, uh, the chiefs, the kings, and elders. Because I think we have to have a multi generational. Uh, you know, young people are great, but we do need to be in conversation with our elders and with the wisdom that they hold because they've been there and they've done that. And so um, I think it's important for the young people to talk about their aspirations and dreams and maybe re-inspire some of the elders, but also get the elders to let us uh, in on the wisdom that may, we may be lacking as young people. Uh, I think I'm part of the elders, so. but I'm saying that I think, um, you know, we need to have these conversations and really listen to one another and so we hope to have that as well. And we want to do that in conjunction with the Panifest. Uh, and so we, we have some really um, wonderful ideas and we hope to brainstorm and to expand these ideas as we talk more and learn from others uh, on the ground here. Awesome. Thank you. Wow. So, uh, wow. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, one of, my, one of my ancestors is kicking up here. <laughs> Let's not leave out the Caribbean. Oh, well, oh, yeah. they, they're included in my diaspora. Yeah, of course. Diaspora, now, nah, you know, we've we got all the American folk over here. <laughs> well, no, I'm a Jamaican. I have Jamaican. I have Jamaican. My okay. dad was from Jamaica. Okay, I'll see, there you go. Okay. So, I did not know that, Terry. But, you know, black people are black people, but we're all kinds of people. I'm okay. Native American. You know, we have a whole lot of stuff going on. That's what black means. It don't just mean one area. Black is an experience, actually. Ex it's an experience of being, uh, surviving the slave trade and thriving, uh, I would hope, yes. wherever we when, are. When you yes. bring Mama Lou, Reverend Ofori, and Dr. Ofori in one studio, that's what happens. <laughs> <laughs> it has been explosive, it has been educative, it has been impactful. And I can assure you, 2021 has a lot in store, but we have to be intentional about what we do, and we have begun just that. Partnership is very critical, and the media is very critical, and that's why we had the conversation. That's why we actually had this distinguished guest in the studio today. There are many others out there, but they serve as a benchmark, as a reference point, as a blueprint on what we intend to do with that huge human resource out there in the diaspora, not only in America, but they are African Americans, they are Africans in the diaspora, they have even Africans in Europe and even in Asia. And the largest African population is it's in Brazil. Yeah. Let's exactly. not forget exactly. about South America. Exactly, South America, uh, even in Australia. Yes, everywhere. They have the aborigines. So it's, it's, a, it's a movement, and we are very intentional about this. We want to make Africa serve the world better. It's not a political fight between a race and another race, but it's about making Africa a better producer of whatever we give the world so that we can make the world a better place. Amen. So um, before we go off, there are some individuals who over the, the past weeks and months have been very helpful and critical to the supporting the information that we gather as Yali TV. We want to use the opportunity to really uh, appreciate the contribution of some of our correspondents and if my producer is ready, we would love to specially uh, commend uh, Musu Davis all the way from Liberia. Thank you so much for your contributions over the month. She, she actually was responsible for recording some of the activities of uh, Yale Fellows and other young people in the, uh, the, the Republic of Liberia. Thank you so much for what you did. Also, we have another young fellow from all the way uh, the Gambia. I wonder why they say the Gambia. The smiling <laughs> coast of the Gambia in the person of Dauda Jalo. Dauda Jalo was one of the correspondents also was responsible for bringing us up to speed with updates on the COVID-19, what some of the young fellows were doing to help and support government all the way in their country, in their villages and even as far as the countryside. He brought us pictures, videos, and it was very, very, very incredible. Thank you so much for your support. We are very hopeful next year it will not just be a mentioning, but it will be something much more. Amen. Um, also to our correspondent from Mozambique uh, in the person of Kremelda Makaukau. That's how I call it, but I know there's a better pronunciation. She helped us with all our Portuguese uh, to English um, translations. She also brought us reports in Portuguese because 
Uh, Africa is made of English, French, Portuguese, and a little bit of Spanish. So she did well to give us reports, all our reports that came up in Portuguese. She was responsible for that. She mobilized uh, speakers for our program in Portuguese. So all the Portuguese contributors and facilitators, she was responsible for mobilizing them. We are very, very grateful to you for the support you gave us uh, in the months that uh, went persisted through the pandemic up until now. Thank you so much. And also to our country correspondent in the Republic of Malawi. He was a, he was a, a Yali fellow in the um, Regional Leadership Center in South Africa, and he came up so strong. He, he actually will edit some of the reports. He picks the, the information, edits the reports, and then delivers it live on iReport. It was one of the most consistent um, reporters on iReport. We had uh, over four months of broadcasts, and it was almost consistent in more than 70% of the reports that came through. We really appreciate what you did, and I'm very sure those who are watching us and are watching you will really commend you and work with you in your country and around Southern Africa because of your diligence. Thank you so much. And the last but not the least is not other than Jessica Blessing Bonzi. Uh, we had an issue where our country correspondent head uh, had to leave us at the point. She deputized, deputized her position, took over and did extremely well. One by far the most consistent alongside these uh, ladies and gentlemen was Bonzi Jessica Blessing and she will go beyond just reporting to ask what should be done, what teams we want to report on and you were just tremendous. I'm hoping that next year, as I said earlier, we will not just mention your names, but we'll go ahead to even give some rewards and awards of uh, recognition to uh, entice and also motivate others to go beyond just the immediate gratification. I'm very sure there's so much that we are planning behind the scene that we're not allowed to divulge right now. And when the time comes, we will honor you for your, your uh, contributions. We'll take a message from uh, Musu Davis, she shared a message with us uh, earlier on before we came on, on set. We'd we'll love to take that message. My producer will share it once we get ready to run off this extraordinary two day summit. My name is Musu W. Davis. I am the country corresponding coordinator of Yali TV in Liberia. And I want to welcome you to the Young African Media Summit 2020. It's a summit to inspire you, especially as it relates to your career your media career, your journalism career as a young person. So I'm encouraging you to be part of it online. You know, being a part of YADI, especially the Young African Leaders Initiative, is a lot because I'm so excited that I am an alumni of YADI TV or YADI, the Young African Leaders Initiative, Africa. This initiative have, has brought so much thing to me, happiness, you know, it has developed my career over the period of time, and I am proud to say that from this training, I am a leader, a mentor, a career coach, and you can just name it. Currently, I am a producer, program producer on Radio Bethel 103.5 FM, where I run the health program called Living Well, where we talk about preventive measures that you can take to be safe. On Living Well, we talk about disease prevention, and other health problems. So this is my personal contribution given to you, you know, as a person or as a beneficiary from Yadi training around Africa. So be a part of this summit, you wouldn't regret it. Okay, yeah. we we read back. Thank you, Musu Davis, for that uh, introduction. Uh, all too soon. The two-day summit is coming to an end. But it's not ending here. It's just transitioning into what we initially told you. We're going to be having the Young Africa Media Fellowship. I tell you, it's going to be great. Don't miss the opportunity to be part of this uh, program when it is launched. All you need to do is keep watching our social media uh, platforms on Instagram, uh, Twitter, and then on Facebook as well as on our website, www.yalitvonline.com for further information. Ongoing currently is um, an input or a, a call for productions. 
we looking forward to uh, produce or even stream some of the content that is being developed by Yali Fellows as well as other young Africans. So um, when you go onto our website now, um, all you need to do, I, I want to give you the right address. When you get onto our page on Facebook, you go to Yali, Yali 10. You go to the Yali 10 column. When you go there, you will see the Young Africa Media Summit. Click on it and you will see a form. On that form, when you fill it in your details, it gives you a portion where you can share a trailer, just like what we showed earlier in the middle part of the program, a trailer of your project or an episode of your project. A team will go through it. This opportunity lasts from now. Today is 28. That's exactly 31 days. From today to the 28th of December, just make your entries and you might just be one of the producers who have your content stream on Yali TV in 2021. So this opportunity is open to all Africans, not only on the continent, in the diaspora. We'll be doing adverts of it. We'll be doing Facebook ads, Instagram ads, as well as Twitter ads so that you get more information. We want to begin this journey of all that we are, we are so eager to do. We want to begin in our own small way. It's a big way though, but in our own small way to contribute to the bigger picture. So don't be left out of this content uh, um, opportunity, content streaming opportunity. Also, once again, the Young Africa Media Summit is coming up. Blue Crest University College is part of it. The Pan-African Youth Leadership um, Association is part of it. Uh, uh, Mamalu, the organization, Global... Um, Resolve Africa. Global Resolve Africa is part of it. This, partners, this partnership conglomerate is working behind the scene. We'll be announcing more specific information when we are true with our understanding and you'll get to know who is going to be part of the mentors that are going to come up. But don't miss the opportunity to be part of this um, life-changing experience. We we'll would love to use opportunity as we close to show gratitude to the Blue Crest University College for hosting us throughout the 19 series of programs that we did extraordinary support and we are so grateful to you dr anand agrawal and your team we really appreciate your support and uh, we also want to show appreciation to the um, the u.s embassy in ghana uh, your excellency uh, madam sullivan uh, stephanie sullivan we share a name come on thank you so much you you shared a message uh, somewhere early this month we really appreciate you and uh, uh, a belated happy thanksgiving to you and the team at the U.S. Embassy. To you, uh, Rukmina and Liz, we really appreciate your support. You were posting the, every event we had, you posted it on the, the embassies and social media pages. That is so remarkable and really gave us a, thumb, a thumbs up and we really appreciate your part at the back. Also to the team, uh, the Yali team uh, in Washington, Elizabeth Liu and Megan and the rest of the team. We really appreciate your support. Uh, every event we had, they sent an email to the whole 655, that's a 650,000 membership group for them to participate in the program. That was a lot of support. It really counted in getting people to actually watch every program that we did. We really appreciate the support. Thanks, special thanks to the Africa Bureau at the Department of State. We know that this is the beginning of greater things to, to come in the coming years. Also to other partners that we don't mention your names, those who participated in the programs. There are people that will be reaching out to you either by visits or by sending our appreciation in form of letters and citations. Uh, in the coming weeks, especially during the, the Christmas festivities, we will be showing our appreciation in a special way. Also to you who made up time to watch us. We really appreciate um, everything that you did for us by sticking and staying with us. Our uh, head of corporate affairs was supposed to, to give this closing remark, but I, I, I hope I did exactly what you have done. We really appreciate everything you did for us. Those of you who are French or Francophone and you, you have to just, one way or the other, just cope with us. We are coming up with French programs for you next year. The same for our Portuguese and Spanish brothers and sisters all across the world who want to hear what is happening on the continent. We'll be coming with content just to make sure you, you get in touch with us. There's some big news also coming which we'll be announcing later on in the month of December. As uh, Reverend um, uh, Ofori uh, he treated earlier, we'll be having the Kwanzaa uh, made in Africa market for you guys. So we'll be making an announcement 
pretty soon in the next coming days for you to know how we could participate either virtually or physically. We'll also be having an idea tour. Uh, so those uh, Yali fellows who are privileged to be in Ghana will be joining us on grounds or on site for us to have a, uh, an extraordinary uh, convergence where we'll be discussing some ideas of which we would love to implement in 2021. I wish I could say much more, but all too soon we've come to the end of the two-day yearly uh, celebration of media practitioners, which was the Young African Media Summit. It was an extraordinary time with you being at the other side watching and imbibing some of the rich information that our panelists shared with you. Don't hesitate to share this link of the, the stream that we've watched today. Thank God it's not traditional television that is off. It is out there. We will be doing uh, a rebroadcast also on YouTube in the next coming days. So stay tuned for the schedules for the broadcast of the 19 programs that we had in the previous uh, series of the program. Thank you so much for being uh, Africa at heart and in spirit. You don't need to be black to be African. All you need to do is identify with our identity and believe in the continent of Africa and the people from Africa. Thank you, for, thank you so much for watching Yali TV. And we'll be back next time with another educative program. Bye for now. I believe in Africa. I'm Eunice Mano Bagi, the correspondent from Nigeria. Keep watching Yali TV. I'm Adikali Eskamara from Sierra Leone. Keep watching Yali TV. I believe in Africa. My name is Absa Samba, a correspondent from the Gambia. Keep watching Yali TV. Africa. I'm Milam Leticia, correspondent from Cameroon. Keep watching Yali TV. I believe.